Hey. I got a hard cuz. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. Happy Wednesday. Hey, y'all. Come on in. Come on in. It is a lot going on in the streets, child. Oh, my goodness. It is so much going on. So much news. A lot of stuff to get to. Let me check something here real quick. I'm trying to make sure this post is up. I've been waiting for Madia to post it. Um, whew, I hope you guys are doing good today. Um, so let me go ahead and start. Okay, good. She posted. Okay, good, 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 good. We're going to get into that tea in just a little bit. I know why y'all are here. Shout out to all the, you know, the horse slash hottie fans. Um, I, I know y'all are somewhere, you know, peeking and hiding, waiting to see what I got to say. Don't know why y'all follow me because y'all say up and down that y'all don't like me, but it is what it is. Welcome. Um, so before we get on to the, you know, because we're going to wait for more people to come, okay? But um, before we go and talk about the whole situation with Meg, Tori, and Kelsey, um, because that right there, child, it's a mess, a hot mess. But I'm not surprised. Um, I really wanted to hit on what's going on currently with Miss Carisha and Grandpa Diddy, even though he's not a grandfather, he's old enough to be one. Um, so it's a lot of mess going on with this situation. I want to talk about it a little bit further because she's back online going at it with another one of his, you know, selections. And um, first, let me say this, because one thing I've noticed with social media, if you're talking about somebody's faves and all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're, you're bashing, you're not right. It's funny that when I hold women, and I don't care what race the woman is, accountable, all of a sudden is your woman shaming, you're talking down on women. But when I hold black men accountable and, you know, call them out for their bullshit, yes, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't get that. I just, I don't get that. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I keep the same energy for everyone. I don't like when people play in my face. You know what I'm saying? Do what you want to do, but don't sit here and lie and try and play in my face. And my issue with this whole Carisha situation. Now, you guys remember when she first got with Diddy. What did I say? I was here for it. You had a lot of older women who felt the way about her dating Diddy. And I'm like, why do y'all care? She's grown. Diddy's grown. Well, she's young and he could be manipulating her. She is 28. She's closer to 30 than she is 20. Are you really upset about Diddy possibly manipulating her? Are you upset because you're not in that space? Okay. I said from day one, I didn't care about her being in a relationship with Diddy. As long as she understood her place, she understood, you know what I'm saying, where she stood in the grand scheme of things. Do you get that bag, get that money, go on trips, have a good time? Because other races teach their daughters OK, they're not teaching their daughters to run and, you know, get married and help, you know, build up their black king. That's not what they're teaching their daughters. They're teaching their daughters to go after men of power and status. And one thing about Papa Diddy is that he's definitely a man of power and status, like it or not. It's the truth. Right. So I thought there was nothing wrong with that. Because if she wasn't the one, it'd be, you know, some other little spicy Latina or Asian girl. So now it's, it's a black girl that got Diddy's attention. It's helping her brand. Okay. Uh, it's definitely helping his brand as well because she got the youth. You know, she's in hip hop. So I was here for it. My issue with Carisha came in because Carisha forgot her place in the grand scheme of things. And she started catching feelings. See, you can't brag about being a city girl. And I, you know, I got the best cooch and I fuck for bags and shoes and, you know what I'm saying? Make them eat it and make them take you shopping. This is what they promote. So you can't call yourself a city girl, but then now you're sitting here getting in your feelings. Another thing that bothered me is that I don't like when people use these situations, Black women in particularly, 
use situations like this to then try and talk down to other black women. So her telling black women, oh, y'all could only wish upon a star that y'all could be in this situation. Ma'am, hold up. Okay. First and foremost, you're not in really a special situation. And people need to realize that what's for you is for you. Everybody may not want to be a part of Diddy or, you know, Nick Cannon or Lil Wayne's Haram. So let's start there, right? But let's also not act like these type of women don't exist. I get tired of like, there can only be one type of woman. Like all women are just here to get married and have families and, you know, that's the way of the world. Absolutely not. What Carisha and these Asian women are doing has been done since the dawn of man. When a man has power and money, he has options. That's why I say I don't understand why any of these celebrities call themselves settling down. Once you're in a particular position, other women are not going to respect your wife or girlfriend. They don't care. Okay. And a lot of times these men are constantly tempted. They're not going to even respect their own situation. So why even go through the charade? Because that's what it is. It's the charade of being married. And so, again, I'm not mad at her because she was with him and, and getting, you know, whatever she deemed valuable from Diddy. Because, again, women of other races are taught to do that all the time and they get praised. Do you really think this new Asian lady, uh, what's her name, Dina Tran, Dana Tran, you think people are calling her baby mama? Absolutely not. Her community right now was praising her. You done came up. You done had a baby by Diddy of all people. And if you don't believe me, let's go back to the whole Jeannie Mai situation. I know there's a lot of Jeannie Mai fans. Um, but remember for years, oh, I don't want any kids. Oh, I don't see myself as a mother. I don't want any children. My white husband, whatever his name is, Frank. As soon as she got with Jeezy, who is worth 200 million, all of a sudden, oh, y'all are pregnant. Okay, because they understand money, power, generational wealth. She understands that now that she's had a baby with Jeezy, that money is going to go to her family and her community. See, that's how other people move. So nobody's calling, you know, this new lady a baby mama. They're saying game well played. And that's what Carisha didn't understand. And I'm not saying that Carisha needs to get knocked up by Diddy or anything like that. But the fact that she's online arguing with these other women and going back and forth and trying to prove to the world that her relationship was something more than what it was. And the fact that he's even gaslighting her with this response, like, she wasn't my side chick. She was my shoddy wife. Sir, we all, well, most of us, we grew up in the 90s. Shoddy wife is another name for side chick a girl that you're just fucking but you're not with she knows her place you know her place so because you're trying to switch the name to shoddy wop sometimes somehow that's better than side chick diddy is a clown for that so uh <laughs> miss aisha says black women want struggle love thank you i just i don't get it i i just i don't get it like i said you know if she has the, the option to be with somebody of power and influence and who's doing better than her, there's nothing wrong with that. Because her going back and forth, this is what it does. And this is what I hate about this whole situation, right? Her going back and forth with these Asian women and DJ academics. One, DJ academics never added her name. She should ignore him altogether. I don't even understand why people go back and forth with him, okay? She should ignore him altogether. But when she's gone back and forth with him and putting all their business out there, what these men of power, right? Regardless if y'all want to believe it or not, they're having conversations behind the scenes right now. Diddy, probably Jay-Z, all these men, they're having conversations. And what they're saying is, see, this is why I don't entertain ratchet young black girls. This is why I stick to exoticals because they know how to shut the fuck up because remember the other asian girl that was in that video with diddy look how she jumped up and ran out that camera scene had that been young miami she probably would have started twerking see these are conversation folks aren't ready for 
You know what I'm saying? Once you get into these positions, you have to know how to play your role. And she's messing it up for the for the next little young black girl who wants to be one of Diddy's, you know what I'm saying? Side chicks, part of his shoddy walk crew. Because she's talking too damn much and being messy. She knew what it was. Why are you in your feelings? Now, on top of that, let me go ahead and uh, show you the back and forth that she had once again today. Matter of fact, we can take April Jones. April Jones was messing with Dr. Dre. They had their thing going on. People gave her props for, okay, she don't pull Dr. Dre better than pulling that, that mushroom peen little fizz who won't keep his butthole off my Twitter timeline. I think that was a great upgrade, especially being now that he's busting it wide open on OnlyFans. I said, my damn timeline smells like onions and, and, and just, ugh, stale meat. Why is his booty hole on my Twitter timeline? So props to April for getting out that disgusting situation, okay? People gave props to her. She done went, you know, she's talking to Dre, you know, they're hooking up, doing what they want to do. But you didn't hear peep from either Dre or April. They were seen together. April never talked about it. And now, you know, that relationship cooled off and she's moved on to Tay Diggs. And she seems a lot happier in this situation with Tay Diggs. But my point is, she was dating a high power guy, you know, probably getting handbags and, you know, trips with him. She had a good time. April knew what it was. April wasn't online crying, tattooed tears and, and claiming to be Dr. Dre's main chick. She wasn't asking Dr. Dre to, you know, to get her pregnant. She wasn't doing any of that. April just did her thing. It was what it was. And she moved on. And that's my issue with Carisha. Like, you, you're doing too much, sis. Yeah, I'm sorry. His peen is the ugliest peen I've ever seen. I didn't even know peens looked like that. I almost dropped my phone. Ah! It looks like a mushroom. Ah! Yuck. I shudder thinking about little Fizz's peen. And then had the nerd to just bust. Oh, gross. Oh. Ah! Get it out your mind, T. And this is why I hate Twitter. Because, again, I didn't go searching for little peens, little fizzes peen. It was on my damn timeline. I didn't ask for that shit. I was minding my business. All I see is a mushroom-shaped peen spewing everywhere and a booty hole. So what the hell is this? Why is this on my time? I don't even follow little fizz. Let me go. Ugh, I can smell it. <laughs> Props to April for getting out that situation, sis. We see you. Props to Miss Monice, honey. I know you got a child with him, so you're kind of, you know, stuck. But just, we're praying for you, sis. Just hang in there till the baby's 18. Good gosh, I couldn't believe that shit. This dude is really on OnlyFans trying to get a check. And I know women are not paying for that. What women are paying to see that type of pain? I wouldn't anyway. I wouldn't give a dime. That shit looks weird. Um, okay, let me go. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> let me go ahead and show y'all her back and forth here. Give me just a second. Pull this up. Where is her back and forth with uh, Gina? Okay, here we go. But first, let me show you what Diddy had to say. Okay, let me share my screen. Give me just a second here. All right, so this is what Diddy had to say. Of course, he was talking to DJ uh, academics who won't stop harassing women. Um, Diddy says this, at Young Miami 305 is not my side chick. Never has been, never will be. She's very important and special to me. And I don't play about my shoddy wop. I don't discuss things on the internet. And I will not start today, even though I'm on the internet discussing things. Diddy's a weirdo. Then he goes on to say, so think what you want. But know that if you do something to hurt mine, I'm going to come to your house. And we're going to talk about it like human beings. L-O-V-E, love. 
So that is what old man Diddy had to say. Basically, he was sending dog whistles to DJ Academics. Like, shut your mouth, clown. Don't fuck up my situation ship, okay? And we all know Carisha probably caught him crying. Was, you better say something. Because they're, they're, they're accusing me of being a side chick. And that I am not. So, you know, he had to pull out the tiny violin. We don't care. Um, the fact that he caught her a shoddy wop, that's even worse, okay? The fact that he said he doesn't go to the internet, sir, you're, you're, on, you're on Beyonce's internet running your mouth about a situation that nobody asked you to run your mouth about, okay? You should have just ignored DJ Academics, just like Carisha should have ignored him as well. Now, this is her today. She got into it with uh, Gina Hun. Maybe I'm saying her last name wrong. I'm gonna just call her hun. I don't, maybe the Y is silent. Sorry, he win, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but let's see here. They got into it. Oh, she got music. She says when she's beefing with you over a ninja, but the whole time somebody else is pregnant. City girls down 1,000, okay? So that is what Gina said. And she, Young Miami just goes out. She says, you wanted a baby, bitch. I have a career hoe. You were certified free. You haven't heard from Diddy since the awards, reminiscent on abortions. Let the hurt go, Chung Lee. Then she says, Gina, you've been down bad ever since I came into the picture, ho. You've been crying for a baby for 10 years. Ho, you've been around as a bitch that eats coochie and pee when he feels like it. You will eat her. You the same bitch that was crying over TK because you wanted a baby. Poor sushi. And then she says, bitch, you a munch. If you... If I wanted to eat coochie, Diddy would have had you on your knees, ho. You would eat her. For real, I'm on one. I'm with whatever, whenever, at any given time. Y'all hoes play with Diddy, not me. Then she says, I'm sleepy now. Be back tomorrow. I'll argue with the cat. I don't give a F. I don't give a F. I'm a spicy mayo type bitch. By the way, I don't do brown sauce. I think she meant soy sauce. Then she says, for real, I'm on one. I'm with whatever, whenever, any given time. Okay, she would have said that. And then she sent it back. She said, Carisha, you know you want to taste my yum yum sauce. And then Carisha says, I love sushi. And the girl writes, she loves me. Okay. So that was them going back and forth. Um, <laughs> In my personal opinion, once again, Carisha's out here looking crazy. Why even respond to somebody who's supposed to be a non-factor? And, you know, a lot of the stuff she was saying was very high-key racist towards that girl. Now, for y'all saying, well, the girl put Ninja in her caption, uh, Gina's half black. She's black and Vietnamese, okay? So y'all the same ones who say that Karuchi Tran can, you know, use the N-word because she's half black and Vietnamese. So to me, I see no difference. But her calling her Chung Lee, soy sauce. Now, if the girl would have clapped back and talked about, you know, Carisha wearing, you know, Asian people hair and, you know, started making, you know, derogatory terms about, you know, saying, well, I don't eat soul food and watermelon, then y'all would have been crying tattoo tears and saying she was racist. So, I mean, yeah, she's Blasian. She's not full black. Um, yeah, she's, she's mixed. But, um... I, I thought, you know, those those was kind of some like low blows. Like, why are you going at her ethnicity? You know, if you're just so unbothered. Another thing that I find very funny, um, no, she's not full Asian, AJ, because I actually researched her. She's half Vietnamese. She's half Asian and half black. I don't know if it maybe it's Filipino, but yeah, she's she's half black though. She's not full Asian. Um, but what I find funny is that she's calling this girl a eater. She's saying that the girl is stupid because um, she wanted a baby by Diddy. But if y'all remember, let's see if I have it up here. Okay, here it is. Young Miami's projecting. Because if y'all remember, she too wanted a baby by Diddy. This was in June. Remember, she was on her Revolt TV show, Carisha, please. I'm not going to play it. 
because you know copyright but this is what she says i want to have twins so that's why i'm throwing it out there because i wanted a set of twins and i know they run your family diddy explains that while he's open to the option of more kids he isn't too hung up on whether the next child will be a boy or a girl just a happy baby it wouldn't even matter to me just to be healthy and to have a chance to do it again with all that i've learned now i see it in my future so mind you when he's talking to her about having twins she's begging him for twin babies but you want to talk shit about this this other girl gina y'all not keep receipts bitch. you come in here you're gonna see a whole show full of receipts i don't just pull stuff out the air and i don't i don't get in my feelings over goofy shit, okay? So you're clowning this girl for wanting a baby with Diddy, but yet and still, your end goal was to have a baby with Diddy. And I just want, she wanted twins, okay? And what's so funny about this whole conversation with her and Diddy is the whole time he has an Asian girl knocked up in the wings. Dana's pregnant, this was in June. Dana was knocked up around this time, but he's acting like he has no idea and, and stringing this goofy along. And then another thing, she's talking about, you know, the girls at Eda and, uh, you know, Diddy was just had her there to eat cooch. Well, excuse me, ma'am. Wasn't this you a few months ago wanting to eat out Meg the Stallion? See, we keep receipts around here. Remember, Ernest Owens was blasting her because young Miami uh, was talking about how she wants to eat Meg the Stallion out on her Carisha Please show. And Ernest says, I'm personally over these gay for clout celebrities who are truly homophobic in real life. Carisha, AKA Young Miami, has threatened violence against her own child. But if but if they were to come out, if they were to come out as gay, but she's up here getting press and views playing up such with Meg the Stallion. Remember a few years ago, she said that she would beat her son to death if he was gay. So now you want to clown this girl for doing the same thing that you want to do to Meg Thee Stallion. See, like I said, we're dealing receipts here, okay? We're dealing receipts. Titi, don't forget shit. So why why is her being an eater a bad thing? It looks like you wanted to be an eater of Meg Thee Stallion, okay? It looks like you want to get in between those knees. You know, I just find the whole situation just very comical. You know, like, y'all be so gassed up about her clapbacks, but if you really understand, you know, if you just don't miss out on, you know, new shit, you're looking at her clapbacks is like, these clapbacks are stupid. You too wanted a baby by him. So why are you judging her? You too just offered to eat out somebody that you didn't know. So why are you judging her? It doesn't make any sense. So yeah, big scissor energy. I, I just find the whole situation just very comical with her. And, what, and what's even more funny, like I told y'all, when she had her baby, I have did that in the video. She thought because her baby look and her baby's beautiful, uh summer. Her baby's gorgeous. But she says she swore up and down she has some type of Asian in her because her baby came out with straight hair and almond-shaped eyes. And people were dragging her. And I just find it very funny that she said that in 2019, only for Big Daddy did it. To actually knock up a real Asian woman. And he has the same Blasian baby that she was trying to claim, even though her baby's not Blasian, her baby's full black. Okay, so I just, I don't know. Sometimes you can speak things into existence. <laughs> I just found that whole thing comical. That she was trying to claim Asian because of how her child came out. And meanwhile, her, 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 you know, her lover, her shoddy wop is really out here having half Asian children and dating half Asian women. I just find the whole situation crazy. Ladies, definitely, definitely understand your worth. Um, yeah, she's she said a lot of problematic stuff over the years. I can't take her seriously. Like I said, um, you know, while they're and they're both goofy for this, you know, while they're arguing back and forth and you know, throwing shade at each other while she's being racist towards this half Asian woman, and this half Asian woman's trying to throw shade at her. Meanwhile, Big Daddy, he's in the nursery. All right, baby, go ahead and burp. Oh my gosh, she burped. Oh, look, she burped. He's, he's enjoying fatherhood, bitch. He's over there burping babies and changing diapers and rocking the little baby to sleep while these fucking women are, are, are going back and forth on Twitter. This is embarrassing at this point. Y'all look like two goofies, okay? Big Daddy's putting in work, 
okay? Big Daddy's playing daddy and, you know, living his best life with his new baby love. And y'all are on Twitter arguing back and forth about old balls. But to each its own. <laughs> yes, Lola, he is in the nursery, honey. Burping the new baby. Changing diapers, okay? Making sure the alcohol is on the umbilical cord. He's doing what he's supposed to do as a father. Meanwhile, they're online arguing back and forth and talking about soy sauce and yum yum sauce. <laughs> you can't make this up. Like I said, if you're going to be in these type of situations and that's what you choose to do, and I don't knock women who are in these situations because some women prefer to be kept women. They don't care what their men are out there doing as long as they're kept, you know, looking good and getting bags and, you know what I'm saying? So every woman's goal is not to be a wife. Every woman's goal is not to be in a struggle relationship with a black kind and shit. We was kings and shit. That ain't every woman's goal. Some women are okay being, you know, side chicks or, you know what I'm saying, uh, come get some side puss as long as you drop me off, you know, a few hundred dollars. Some people are okay with that, and that's their grown business. As long as everybody's grown, I don't give a shit what grown folks do, okay? My issue is when you don't know your position, and that's the problem. She keeps running her mouth and going back and forth with people on the internet. You're making it harder for the next girl. And Mr. Shoddy Wop, he's over here talking about this. Oh, you know, that's my Shoddy Wop. Oh, she means a lot to me. Really? Well, I'm confused that she means so much to you. Why are you not with the next black Shoddy Wop? So this is the new girl he's with. You can't make this shit up. Diddy said he's living his best old life. Honey. He said, fuck these. I'm about to be fucking Tom in the grave. I ain't mad at him. He, he He's powerful. He has money. He can do what he wants to do. And all these people are grown and consenting. So this is this new chick. She's pretty. She's an influencer. Her name is Shanta Josephs. Um, a very beautiful girl. They were out and about, you know. I don't know what's in his hand. Child. But they're just, you know, living their best life. So this is a new girl that he's with. But he's over here crying about how, you know, young Miami is his main shoddy wop. Okay, sir, if you say so. I just hope that all these people keep the same energy. I hope he has the same energy when his twins end up being somebody's shoddy wop or when young Miami's daughter ends up being somebody's shoddy wop. Make sure y'all keep the same energy. Because I, I noticed, especially with a lot of these men who have power, they, ha they have no problem making other people's daughters side chicks and, you know what I'm saying, shoddy wops. But somehow when it comes to their child, their, their child is golden and can't be touched. Please get the fuck out of here, okay? Make sure you keep the same energy when, when another old man is smashing your 21-year-old, okay? Because these women that he's dating are young enough to be his children. Justin and what's the other? Well, Quincy ain't his, but Justin is the same age as his new baby's mother. So I, I want Grandpa Shoddy Wop to keep the same energy, okay? When somebody Jay Z's age, you know what I'm saying, starts, you know, looking at his twins once they become of age. Make sure you keep the same Shoddy Wop energy, okay? Make sure you have that same Shoddy Wop Steve Harvey energy. Remember when Lori Harvey was smashing Diddy? And Steve Harvey was over there eating breakfast with him. <laughs> Make sure y'all keep the same shoddy wop energy when it comes to your own daughters. That's my. That's the only thing I say. And just like with uh, Future, uh, Little Wayne, who else be on this shoddy wop side chick energy? Oh, Nick Cannon. Make sure when your oldest gets of age, make sure you're okay with her being, you know what I'm saying, somebody's baby mama, preferably probably baby mama number five. Make sure you keep the same energy, okay? Because they love to treat other people's uh, daughters with a lack of respect and, you know, put them, you know, treat them as dolls and put them on the shelf. But then somehow when it comes to their daughters, you know, can't no, nobody, oh, oh. remember T.I.? You know, he's checking his daughter's hymen and all this stupid shit. But has no problem with his son smashing everybody else's hymen. He had no problem, you know what I'm saying, smashing other people's hymens, other people's daughters. But when it came to his daughters, oh no, she can't be out here fucking. Child. Grandpa Shoddy Wop, make sure y'all keep the same energy when it's y'all's child. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, you know, like I said, this whole situation is is just it's it's silly at this point. I think Carisha needs to stop taking all this to the internet she's she's looking bad out here 
If you want to be a city girl and these are the games that you want to play, I'm cool with that. Because like I said, everybody's grown, everybody's consenting, okay? But you can be in your feelings and, you know, getting upset and cussing folks out and going back and forth with people and trying to say that you're not what you are. You're in a situation, ship, sis, okay? You knew it going in. So just because you find out when we found out that he had a new baby on the way, that's on you. So let me go ahead here. Um, <laughs> this stream was a trip. Shout out to all 10,000 people in here. Please hit that like button if you guys are enjoying this stream and having a good old funky time. Hit that like button, okay? It's free. Let me read some of these uh, super chats here. Give me just a second. Uh, let's see here. Um, Thrilla525 said 1999. Thank you so much. Says, hey, T, too much is going on in this world. Honestly, I lost my job today. Hold on. Over some coworkers' distrust. But this is impetus. I need to start a new field anyways. Many blessings in the new year and positive affirmations. <coughs> Thank you so much for the super chat. I'm sorry you lost your job, but sometimes things happen for a reason. So maybe this might be what needed to push you to start your own business or work for yourself. So thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you, love. Um, let's see here. Monique Lowell sent $299.99. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you for the continued support on my channel. I really, really appreciate you. So thank you. Monique be coming through with them bombs, honey. She do not play. And like I said, she don't never leave no comments. She just drops a huge super chat and walks off. <laughs> so thank you, sis. Appreciate you. Um, let's see here. Erica Lanson, $5, says Diddy has no shame. Yeah. And you know, why should he? You know, at this point, we we allow men of power and men in positions to behave any old type of way, you know, and it's to be expected. He has money. He's he's rich, he, you know, but then in the same breath, we'll cry and talk down to men who don't have the same status and be like, you guys are creating broken homes. You guys are deadbeat dads. Well, these men are doing the same thing, but because they have money, it's excused. And, and that's the sad part, just like with Nick Cannon. How many men excuse Nick Cannon? Because he has money. Meanwhile, all his you know women are coming out, even Mariah Carey, and saying, you need to stop having kids and take care of your children and spend time with them. It's just not about the financial. So until the community holds men of power, and I'm not just saying Diddy, because Elon Musk, like I said, he's another man whore and he's white, okay? Until people hold men of power to the same standard as they hold regular men, they're going to continue acting with no shame, you know? So, I mean, it's sad. It's sad. Let's see here. Somebody says hypergamy is real. Somebody else in the chat says broke men support Nick Cannon the most. <laughs> Oh, them be the main ones. He has money. He can do what he wants to do. Meanwhile, Miss, Mr. Bro, you out here with three kids by three different women. Just go take care of home for us and quit, you know, caping for Nick Cannon in the shade room. No one cares. Money isn't everything. Uh, let me see here. Yvette Stark sent $9. Thank you for the super sticker, sis. Um, Janice Williams says shoddy wop is in her feelings definitely thank you for the super uh the super chat uh kizzy sent a dollar 99 says can we talk about mental health rest in peace twitch um not on this stream but maybe in the future we're talking about the topics that i wrote about but rest in peace to him though um let's see here melanin queen what's up sis says sis i've been rocking with you since the rollout of commando six four Big ass computer with the small screen. Love you, sis. Be safe. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming through. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Thriller sent another 999. Says big facts about fronting peace in face only to play you behind your back. Um, okay, we already read that. Well, this is another one. But thank you for the super chat. Um, Aaron Moore sent 999. Says, hey, auntie. Love you. Just sending some love. Remember you caught out Meg for lying to Gail King. And now it's coming out. You were right. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about the Meg situation, honey. 
I was waiting to get more people in here. Um, TJ sent five says, T, you've been wifey since 1994. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming through, love. Um, Lauren sent $2, says, not little peen. Yeah, I meant to call him little fizz. I'm sorry. With that peen, oh, gosh, I shudder to think about that peen. Ugh. Ugh. Y'all don't bring up his name no more. Stop. I don't even want to think about that mushroom. Um, let's see. <laughs> Miss Macon said $5, says, first super chat T. Always hit the nail right on the head. Love you. Love you too. And thank you. Uh, live from NYC, sent 20, says, you got me over here dying, laughing. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Uh, Nick Smith, I almost called you Nick Cannon, Lord. <laughs> Sorry. Nick Smith sent 9.99, says, little fizzle pop is online selling bugina for a quarter. Pathetic. These straight men are sassier than us gays. I'm glad the gays are calling it out. Like I said earlier, bro, I said, who's paying to see this mushroom peen and this asshole? It ain't women. But he'll swear up and down. He's straight as an arrow. Little Fizzle Pop needs to move around. Uh, let's see here. Uh, young Kobe sent 10 says, shoddy wop equals shoddy, shoddy without privileges. She looks bad. Sorry. Yes. Yep. That's exactly what she is. But she don't, she's delusional. She thinks, you know, somehow she's above these other women and she's not. So thank you. I mean, even Kim Porter sadly knew her place. She knew he was never going to marry her. But she was like, you know, as long as I'm being taken care of, the kids are being taken care of, it is what it is. You know, so yeah, it's crazy. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's DB says, I want your timeline T. I have to go looking for things. However, I wish I had refrained from looking up fizzle pop. I don't know why you went. I told you I was nasty. Y'all gonna learn to stop Googling stuff. Yeah. I was so like, oh, I couldn't even believe he was on. I mean, just all over Twitter. He should be embarrassed. See, that's what happens when them love and hip hop checks run out. They be doing all that talking and now he's selling asshole bags of asshole. Oh, let's see here. Lady Lex says, from the nursery to nursing home to old balls. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Um, the Blind Soul Child sent $49.99. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Young Kobe sent another 10. He says, let's be honest, the music ain't popping. And having a baby by a billionaire would have solidified her spot and brought her lyrics to life. And it didn't. She want to sleep with Meg on her show makes sense yeah i mean people don't understand that you know people having babies by men of status and money it does solidify them people can get mad and say oh you know it's not just about a check a lot of these women are looking to be taken care of that is why nick cannon has what 11 kids by like eight different women they know what it is it's not even about the kids it's about them being taken care of they don't have to work we all know, regardless of he's there or not, or he's not burping the babies, none of these women are going to be working at Walgreens. They're going to be using the baby, you know, having a baby by a rich guy as a hustle. And that's a real hustle. You know what I'm saying? But most of the people who tend to get away with that, because they love to call black women gold diggers. But if you really look at all these rich men, who are their baby's mothers? OK, so that that's the thing. It's like, yeah, that that's an option. But a lot of times it's not an option for a lot of black women. It's an option for everybody else. So, you know, like I said, nobody should be having a child for a check, but people do. I mean, it is what it is. People do. But what I always find very interesting is that especially the ones who pe who preach a lot of pro black shit, like I said, I don't care who anybody dates. I have nothing against interracial dating, right? That is your business. My issue is when you're constantly talking all this pro-black and pro-black family and building generational wealth and preaching down to the black community. But then when we look at 
your situation ship. Well, where are all these black children? Where are, where are all these black women? Where is this black family that you keep preaching to everybody else? Because see, being pro-black is not profitable. And that was my issue with Diddy. He, he talked all this pro-black shit uh, through 2020, 2021, you know, calling out uh, white folks in the industry for not putting money and support behind revolt. But then he gets caught up with the Asian baby's mother. That's very interesting. Meanwhile, he's publicly dating this black woman who clearly wants a child because she's begging for twins. So, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, 50 Cent, have a baby by me and become a millionaire. Yep, 50 Cent did say that. Oh, yeah, I heard about Gunner getting out. Now, what's so funny about Gunner getting out? Oh, y'all swerping down, he was innocent. Oh, Gunner didn't even do nothing. Gunner barely had any charges. Gunner didn't do nothing wrong. Gunner just got caught up. Gunner is pleading guilty. So this is Gunner. Let me pull this up real quick. This came out about an hour ago. Gunner secures freedom from prison. Pleads guilty to racketeering charge and denounces gangs. Okay. So this is what they're saying here. Uh, this is from Sergio Kitchens, AKA Gunner. So this is press statement. He says, when I became affiliated YSL in 2016, I did not consider it a gang, more like a group of people from the Metro Atlanta who had common interests and artistic aspirations. My focus of YSL was entertainment, rap artists who wrote and performed music that exaggerated and glorified urban life in the Black community. While I have agreed to always be truthful, I want to make it perfectly clear I have not made any statements and have not been interviewed, have not been cooperated, have not agreed to testify or be a witness for or against any party in the case and have absolutely no intention of being involved in the trial pro process in any way. I have chosen to end my own RICO case with an Alfred plea and end my personal ordeal by publicly acknowledging my association with YSL an Alfred plea in my case is the entry of guilty plea to one of the charges against me, which is in my best interest, while at the same time maintaining my innocence towards the same charge. I love and cherish my association with YSL music and always will. I look at this as an opportunity to give back to my community and educate men and women about gangs. Okay. All right. So Gunna is out. I know he's happy, though. He's been in there for a while. So, you know, yeah, he definitely wasn't built like that. You know, it's all fun and games. So they, you know, so they start looking at them years and sentences. Not y'all putting rat emojis in there. Ooh, y'all are messy. Again, um, yeah, this is who they're looking for is Young Thug. Young Thug is going to end up getting time behind this, I believe. That is who they want, is Young Thug. He is the head of the snake. So they're not playing no more. And people need to decide at what point are we going to change the frequency of the music? Because a lot of these people who are rapping these lyrics, a lot of this stuff is actually happening. They're not just stories. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Oh, not him. Oh, not y'all calling him T.I. Jr. Oh, Lachey is messy. <laughs> is that what y'all are calling him now in Atlanta? They done said T.I. Jr. Oh, child. Let me get about that one. Okay. So shout out. Let's see here. We got a lot of people here. Let's go ahead and talk about the Meg Thee Stallion situation, child. Oh, you know what? Before I start, I had to play this uh, this promo real quick. Give me just a second here. Today's sponsor of the show is BetterHelp. So let me go ahead and um, play this commercial really quick. We got to play bills around here. All right, here we go. All right. Enjoy. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. Today's show sponsor is BetterHelp. And as you guys know, a lot of people are going through it. People are really stressed out. We have the cost of living going up. And a lot of people do not know what their future may look like. 
in 2023. Did you know that a licensed therapist can help you become a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small? Talking out your issues, problems, and fears with a licensed therapist can help you become less stressed and more confident in accomplishing your goals. So if you're thinking about trying out therapy, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, it's accessible, and it's all online. All you have to do is go onto their website and fill out a short survey, and they will match with one of their hundreds of licensed therapists. And also, don't forget that if you're not clicking with that therapist, you can switch therapists at any time. So you're never going to be stuck with one particular therapist. So if you want to be a better problem solver and get your goals accomplished, therapy can definitely get you there. So make sure you guys go on to betterhelp.com slash sip slow to get 10% off of your first month. So once again, go on to the website, betterhelp.com slash sip slow to save 10% off your first month. So make sure you guys check them out. All right. Let me come back on the screen. All right. Better help. All right. So now we got to talk about this Magda Stallion situation. I have been talking about this and following up with this case for months. I've broken it down. Um, I've stated my opinion of the case. I've told you guys for a while now, I have absolutely no dog in this fight. I just don't care anymore about this whole situation. I'm simply waiting to see if Tory is found guilty or not guilty. If he's found guilty and he gets thrown in jail, that is his business. If he's found not guilty and he's free to walk out of jail, that is his business. It makes me no difference, right? So the main person I have been waiting to hear from is Kelsey. So today, Kelsey Harris came out and she basically spoke about the situation. But let's start with yesterday, with what happened yesterday during trial. So shout out to Mo. Mo from Lawyers for Work has been on it. He's not playing. So we're going to watch these videos together, including Kelsey's testimony as well. So let me go ahead and pull these up here. All right. So let's start with part two, because I don't think part one, because mm, they're kind of long. Let's, well, you know, let's just start with part one. We ain't got nothing else to do, child. We're not about to go nowhere. Start with part one. Trial is underway. It started with Meg the Stallion testifying. I'm going to take you through what she testified about in the morning. We're currently on lunch break. She's going to come back and complete her testimony this afternoon. It started with questions about Tory Lanes. She testified that she knew him only for a short time leading up to this incident. They were friends. She was asked, were you intimate? She said, yes. She was asked, were you exclusive? She said quite happily, no. They Then they asked her about her relationship with Kelsey. She said that she's known Kelsey since freshman year of college. How do you know her? How would you describe the relationship? I found her in answer very interesting. She said, I quote, we did everything together. They asked her, hey, how do you feel about being here today? She was struggling through the testimony. I was a little surprised at her answer. She said, I don't feel good. I can't believe I have to come do this. Not really sounding like a victim to me. She's a strong black woman. That's the image that the jury, I think, would have gotten of her. And I expected her to say something more like, I'm here for justice. I'm here to tell my truth. That man shot me. They asked her about when they left the party and when Tori got there. So she explained that initially she had gotten there with a larger group of people. Then later she asked Tori to come. By the time Tori got there, it was a lot fewer people. And then towards the end of the night, they asked her who was left. And she said it was basically just me, Tori and Kelsey. And then we got in the pool. Then she said that when they were in the pool, her wig started getting loose. It was coming off. She felt uncomfortable. So she wanted to leave. She told Kelsey, her and Kelsey went to the driver and said, hey, we want to leave. And this brings up the first point of contention where, according to Meg, the driver said, I won't leave without Tori. Now, obviously, Tori's team says Meg said she won't leave without Tori. And then the, the person actually at the defense attorney asked, well, why didn't Tori want to leave? And everybody was waiting for the answer to that question, because that's the whole Kylie Jenner angle. Unfortunately, defense objected. The judge said sustained. She didn't answer the question, why didn't Tori leave? The whole situation in the car. She testified that, hey, look, we all got in the car. I got out and arguments started to break out. Basically, Tori started the argument. I was shocked when she dropped and admitted that this argument started with Tori saying to Meg, hey, why are you snaking your friend like this? And basically revealing that he had hooked up with both of them, that they had been cheated on by him. And this sort of led into the whole big fight. At one point, she gets out of the car but then she did get back in because they convinced her to get back in. And then we get to the shooting. And here, there was some shocking stuff. So here's some of the key stuff. One, 
she described, Meg described that, hey, look, I got out of the car, I looked back over me, and then I saw Tori holding a gun, pointing it at me, and he shot me after he said, dance, bitch. But then, this is the prosecution asking the questions, and even in the prosecution asking the questions, she said stuff that makes you scratch your head, which leads you to believe that what's going to happen under cross-examination. The prosecution asked her this, where was Kelsey when Tori was doing the shooting? You know what Meg said? Meg said, I didn't see Kelsey. I only saw Tori. Question, was she in your field of vision? Because... <laughs> I mean, she's right there. Where was she? If you can't answer that question, that doesn't seem like it adds up, especially not in a case where the theory from the other side is that there was a struggle and that uh, Kelsey was the one who let off the gun. If the victim can't tell you where Kelsey is, that seems highly problematic to me. The other parts of the testimony that were a little bit confusing is they asked her, you know, where was Tori? Was he standing on the car? Was he standing on the ground? And she said, well, he was shooting up over the window, but I don't know if he was standing on something. And they asked her, how tall is he? She said, oh, I think he's like 5'3 or 5'4. He's taller than that, but that's not tall enough to shoot over the window of an Escalade while standing on the ground. And then they asked her, hey, was he on the, the, the passenger door or was he on the uh, front the front door or the back door? That's what they, She said he's on the passenger side. And they were like, all right, well, was it the, the front door or the back door? She said, oh, I don't. The other part of her testimony that I found a little confusing, it didn't mesh with what the prosecutor said in his opening. The prosecutor said in his opening that Kelsey went to where Meg was and that after Kelsey went to where Meg was, after Meg had been shot, that Tori was approaching them. Meg's testimony today was different. Meg's testimony was not that she got shot, she went away, and then Kelsey went to where she was, and then Tori came at the two of them. No, Meg's testimony is she got shot, she went away, and then she saw Kelsey and Tori both coming to them. Again, does not add up. We finished with why did you not tell the police the truth? And this was very interesting, whereas typically prosecutors are in the business of supporting police officers here. They elicited testimony where Meg said, look, I didn't tell the police the truth because this was around the time George Floyd had been shot. And I thought if I told them the truth, they were going to shoot Tory. I didn't feel safe with the police. I am. And I thought this was kind of weird, but she said it. She said, I'm a member of the black community. And in my community, we don't cooperate with what do I think? I think that the rest of the direct testimony is going to come out. It will be interesting. I think the defense attorney has a lot of room. Hey, what's up, bro? I think the defense attorney has a lot of room to poke holes in the story. And I think the rest of the witnesses are going to say things that the defense attorney is going to have to show that it doesn't all add up. That if Kelsey was right there, how is Meg the Stallion going and telling you that when I turned around and I saw Tori shot me, I have no idea where Kelsey was? Day two of the Tory. Okay. So now, let me play out the second half. This was after uh, he got home. Day two of the trial is in the books. Meg the Stallion has finished testifying. Let me catch you up on what happened in the afternoon session. It started with the prosecutor leading with this. She said, hey, Meg, I know we went a little fast this morning. I want to slow down. And Meg said, yeah, I, I, I was a little nervous. And then Meg actually said, these were her words. She said, I want to feel strong. I want to come off strong and i didn't and then she proceeded to testify and she did come off a lot stronger and a lot more sure of herself in the afternoon session there were powerful moments talking about he shot me pointing talking about the pain and the trauma and the emotion this whole situation has caused her talking about how she initially did not want to do this she wanted to try to protect tori and so there were very powerful moments of the testimony she explained that ultimately she did decide to go to the police and say that tori was the shooter because of the false narratives that tori had put out there in her mind she felt like she was a grown woman she shouldn't have been hanging out with these people, getting involved in this mess. I'm not quite sure who the, these people that she, like she was referring to when she was like, oh, I shouldn't be hanging out with them. She was hanging out with like Kylie Jenner, her assistant, Tori Lane. So I guess she just meant Tori. I thought that statement was very indicative about how Meg feels about this whole situation, which is basically that she did nothing wrong. She had nothing to do with this mess. And she just wants to be completely removed from the whole situation. She denied that Kylie Jenner told her to leave. She denied that her, the security guard in Kelsey, had at one point left and then came back because she said, I want to go back to get Tori. She said that it was the security guard who wouldn't leave without Tori, and that's why she was there. But at the same time, she also admitted that she didn't want to leave without Tori. So, again, it, there was a lot of this. She just didn't want to say anything that made her image look bad, and I don't know why. She denied that there was any sort of relationship between Kelsey and Tori, which could have led to her being accused of going behind Kelsey's back. And like in the car, she admits that in the car, Kelsey accused her of going behind her back. So I don't know how she's denying that there's no relationship between the defense attorney asked her, hey, what did Kelsey mean when Kelsey said that this isn't the first time you've gone behind my back? And Meg said, oh, I don't know. Then we get to the shooting sequence, and I think the defense attorney did a really good job here focusing on the fact that, hey, did Meg the Stallion actually see 
who was shooting the gun. I don't think there's any doubt that five shots rang out. The question is who pulled the trigger? Was somebody shoot, pointing at her and who? The defense attorney established this, that Meg is in the front seat, front passenger, that Kelsey is directly behind Meg, and that Tori is in the rear passenger seat. He got Meg to testify this. Meg gets out of the car. She walks a couple steps to the front of the car by the uh, absolute front, and then she goes a couple steps beyond that. All of this took a couple seconds. Within that time, apparently, Tori Lanes has made it from the rear passenger seat to now being on the passenger side. And from the passenger side, he pulls out a gun. She said he pulled the gun from where it's not clear, but he pulled the gun. He points it at her and shoots five times. Right before shooting, he yelled, dance, bitch, leading her to turn around and then see him with the gun. He pulls it, points, shoots, five shots. Where's Kelsey in all this? She has no idea. What does she then do? She then crawls away. The part that the defense attorney focused on is how, in a matter of seconds, does he get from the rear passenger to having a gun in his hand to being on the passenger side in position to shoot over the window at you all in a matter of seconds. To me, there had to be something else that happened in that sequence of events from the time she got out of the car and the time the shots rang out. And then she completely denied that there was any sort of altercation between her and Kelsey as to whether there was an altercation between Kelsey and Tori. And there has to be some altercation nails because there's a fingernail on the ground and there's jewelry on the ground. And so how did, and Kelsey has blood on her, Kelsey has her, her swimsuit strap ripped off. So how did that all happen? And apparently there was a bump. She says that I saw a bump between Tori and Kelsey. And I guess the prosecutors will use that to establish why Kelsey is got her strap ripped and jewelry on the floor broken and a fingernail lying on the middle of the street. Bottom line, her testimony was strong, it was powerful, it was a victim telling you that a man shot her. All right, so from here, I think there's two important issues with this case. One, what are the other witnesses gonna say? What's the driver gonna say? What's Kelsey gonna say? And what is the wit Nate, there was a homeowner who lived there, who was in the house that is very close, very adjacent to where all of this is unfolding. He would have seen and heard a lot. He's gonna testify. The other thing, the defense did a really good job of establishing that, hey, Meg's timeline here of in a few seconds, Tori gets out of the rear passenger, gets onto the passenger side of the vehicle, yells, dance, bitch, pulls a gun, lets out five shots. That There could have been a lot more that happened there in that sequence because that's a lot of things happening in a very small amount of time. And it is not clear from Meg's testimony that a jury would go ahead and say, oh yeah, that man pulled a gun and he was shooting out. I could see the jury looking at that testimony, looking at that sequence of events, saying that doesn't add up and that means reasonable doubt. We're looking at it and saying, well, okay, maybe something happened here, but did this guy intentionally pull a gun and shoot at this woman? No, maybe there was another shooter. Maybe there's another explanation of how those gunshots rang out. Day two of the trial is in the books. Meg the Stallion has finished testifying. Let me catch you up on what happened in the afternoon. All right. So that was the part about Meg's um, testimony. And remember, I talked about that fingernail, that there was some type of fight between both of these women. Remember, I was like, it was like two horses just fighting nails and, and jewelry going everywhere. Remember, I talked about this months ago. So now all of a sudden, she has no idea about the fingernail. There was no fight, no, ju no jury in the driveway. Okay. So now we go on to today, and he's talking about Kelsey. So give me just a second here. Okay, this is it right here. Oh my God. When we walked out of that courtroom just now, every single person was shocked. Every single person was frozen. A lot of people were looking at me like, bro, tell me what is going on. Kelsey took the stand before she even started talking. There were fireworks. This started with Kelsey coming in and saying she is invoking her Fifth Amendment right to remain silent and not testify. When someone invokes the Fifth Amendment, they have to be invoking it because if they were to testify, they would be giving testimony that incriminates themselves. She said, I will not testify because I would be giving testimony that I'm incriminating myself. That's what it means when she invoked the Fifth Amendment. Now, the government offered her immunity. They said that we will not prosecute you and use this testimony against you, so please testify. Her lawyer came back and said, well, that's not good enough. I don't want you to just not use her testimony against her. I want you to confirm to me that you will not prosecute her for any crimes arising out of this instance, out of this situation. The prosecutors said, yes, on the record, we will not be charging Kelsey for anything that came out of this incident. 
and then she testified. I'm gonna go over the whole testimony in the next video, but here's the piece that we just left off at lunch. The courtroom is just, I can't even explain the tension. They asked her, at one point, did Tori ever say that I'll shoot you? And she said, I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment right, which suggests, they, they asked her, what's the context? When did he say, I'm gonna shoot you? She said, I invoke the Fifth, which suggests that the context was Kelsey was doing something, perhaps Meg was also doing something that would incriminate her. That's the context. That's what I get from it. That's my opinion. That's my read of it. For those of you who have been telling me that I'm biased and that there's only one angle to this story and that a man pulled a gun and shot five times at another woman and that the prosecutors haven't charged him with attempted murder, but I'm biased. If you believe the story that a man pulled a gun and shot five times at another woman, he hasn't been charged with attempted murder, and now you have another woman in the car saying, I plead the fifth. Oh my God. When we walked out of that courtroom just now. Okay. Let me see if she put on the second half. Let me refresh my page. That, oh my God. <laughs> that part is funny. Okay, yo, she does have the second half up. Let's watch this. catch you up on the rest of Kelsey's testimony. They asked her, how are you feeling? She said, I don't want to be here. They asked her, what's triggering you? She said, quote, lies from Megan. She was asked, what lies? That I betrayed her, that I am a bad friend, that I took hush money. She was asked, how do you feel about the allegation that you shot Megan? She said, that's ridiculous. She was asked, how did you meet Tory Lanes, me and Meg both met her him at the same time at a Rock Nation brunch. She continued that after they met, Meg wanted to hook Tory up with Kelsey, that that did happen, that Kelsey and Tory were engaged in an intimate relationship, that Kelsey got COVID, went back to Texas, and during the time she was back in Texas, having left LA, Tori and Meg started getting it on. They talked about the night of the incident. They got to Kylie Jenner's house around 3 to 4 p.m. She was a great witness, by the way. She answered everything extremely knowledgeably, extremely truthfully. I believe every word she said. She never seemed like she was trying to hide something, except when she pled, except when she pled the fifth, of course. Now, she's clarified, this was not a party. Those are just people hanging out. There was maybe five or six people before Tori got there. There was a lot of alcohol. She said at one point she did pass out when she woke up. Tori was there. They were all in the pool. They were having fun. She confirmed a lot of the speculation. Tori was hooking up or trying to hook up, flirting with Kylie in the pool. Meg was very agitated, trying to leave with Tori. Tori did not want to leave. She contradicted Meg's testimony. Meg said, oh, I don't remember ever leaving once and then coming back. Kelsey testified. They all got in the car. They left without Tori. As they were going, Meg is rambling being just weird and then says oh i forgot my slipper let's go back they all go back to get her slipper then they grab tori they she kelsey didn't go in at that point when they went back but when they came out meg came out with tori and meg said to kelsey bitch kylie told us it's time for us to go Our tori drops the bombshell that he had been hooking up with meg kelsey did not know this the first time she learned this is in that car that's when the argument ensues. That's when just lots of arguing is going back and forth. The prosecutor really tried to pin it down and make it look like the argument was only between Tori and Meg. And Kelsey was adamant that, nah, everybody was arguing with each other. It was a mess. She confirmed that Meg was dissing Tori's career, his skills as an artist. This stuff all crescendoed. The prosecutors asked her about, was there ever a threat made by Tori to shoot? She said, yes. Prosecutor asked her, what's the context? She said, I invoke my Fifth Amendment right. You can only invoke your fifth if the testimony that you are compelled to give will incriminate you, meaning that the context around the threat, if Meg will not tell us, if, if Kelsey tells us, it would incriminate her. All right, you heard the bombshell from this morning. Let me catch you up on the rest. All right, let me come back on the screen. Woo! It's a lot to unpack. It's a whole lot to unpack. We got over 13,000 people, almost 14,000 people in the house. Thank y'all for joining me. So it, it's a lot to unpack. And I've been saying from day one, it's funny how a lot of things I've been saying in my live stream over the past year, we're seeing it play out. Remember when I said it was a bad idea for her to keep running her mouth and running to the media and that silly Gail King interview that she did where she got in sleep with Tori. And, and I told you, I said, they're going to use that. That's going to come up in trial. 
we don't give a fuck who Megan fucks. I told y'all this two weeks ago when the whole the baby situation came out. I don't care who she smashes. It's not my business. She's grown. But the problem is when you're lying, it makes people give you the side eye. Because if you can lie about something as simple as who you smash as a grown adult, what else are you lying about? So that's the problem. She kept trying to do these interviews and kept going live. And people are now saying, okay, well, this is not matching what you said, you know, in July 2020. This is not matching this interview because the only person who's been out here talking is Meg. For the most part, Tori, you know, he said a few things after Kelsey, after her diss tape, he didn't hear nothing else about Kelsey. And I told y'all months ago, I said they were fighting I said, well, most females get into it where, remember, they were best friends. Every time you saw Meg, you saw Kelsey, okay? They were going everywhere together, hanging out. That's my bestie. That's my BFF. Then all of a sudden, after this situation, nothing, okay? And remember, Kelsey's mom and sister were dragging Meg back in 2020. Because, like I said, if that's your friend, why would you have left her in jail? Why, when she was talking about Tori and Kelsey, she was like, I don't know where them bitches went, but I went over here. Well, if that's your homegirl, why is she a bitch right along with Tori? That is because they were smashing the same guy. And I was saying that because at one point, Meg was trying to make it seem like Kelsey was broke and, you know, was using her for fame. But I showed y'all where Kelsey been getting money. She been doing things in the club. She was riding around with the Prince family. You know what I'm saying? She, she been having money so they're not fighting over money they're not fighting over riches they're fighting over peen and obviously some type of fight went down because again we have the nail we have the jury they were bombing that night but even with this whole situation it does not make sense because if kelsey was 100 innocent why is she needing to plead the fifth that doesn't sit well with me because if I did nothing wrong, there is no pleading the fifth. Kelsey owes Meg no loyalty. Because remember, after everything went down, Meg and her fans were putting it out there that Kelsey was trying to do a Yolanda Salzivar, that she was basically trying to pull a Selena. Remember, Yolanda killed Selena. That is what Meg and her fans were spinning at the time. Then she was throwing little shots at Kelsey. Then Meg dropped the diss track. And then Kelsey replied back. And Kelsey was spilling all types of tea. Remember, I did a whole breakdown on their diss track. Y'all can go back and watch my old streams. So it's funny, everything I've been saying in these streams are literally playing out in the court of law. But like I said, something with this doesn't sit well with me. Because again, Kelsey doesn't owe Megan no loyalty. Because to me, Megan only screams protect black women when it comes to Megan, but she had no problem uh, allowing her fans to go attack another black woman, right? So if she did nothing wrong, why does she have to come into court within the first five minutes and invoke the Fifth Amendment saying that whatever testimony I state, whatever I say on the stand cannot be used against me in a court of law. I cannot have charges pressed against me. That is creepy because now was it a situation where these girls were fighting, okay? Little man pulls out a gun because all these people are drunk. Let's keep it real. They're all drunk. So maybe they're fighting. She done found out her friend is, you know, smashing the guy that she was smashing. She's tired of it. Like, damn, I was smashing the baby first. Now you smashing the baby. I was smashing Ben Simmons. Now you smashing Ben. And then now you smashing Tori after me. I'm just giving y'all a scenario. So maybe they're fighting. You know what I'm saying? They're all into it because nobody's really talking about this fight where nails and jury are all on the ground. Everybody's talking about the shooting. But what I'm thinking may have happened, just my opinion, I'm, you know, I wasn't there. They're fighting. You know, little man is upset. He starts shooting like Yosemite Sam. Pow, pow, pow. Okay. Dance, bitch. He just starts shooting wildly. And maybe they're fighting now over the gun because there were five shots fired. And that's a fact. There was five shots fired. If he was just shooting at her foot, right, that all he needed was one shot. 
why were there so many shots fired? It's sounding to me like maybe they're fighting. They're all fighting over this gun. Because Meg is saying that she doesn't see Kelsey. She only saw Tori. None of it is making sense. It's not. And then if it was like an accident, right? Like he just accidentally fired. Because that's what a lot of people are saying. It might have been an accident. Five times is not an accident. If a gun is being fired multiple times, that's on purpose. So something about this whole situation is just very, very strange. On top of it, Tori's been feeling real confident. Remember, he, nothing formed against me shall prosper. Y'all going to be eating your words. He sounds a bit too sure of himself. Is there some type of backdoor deal with possibly Kelsey? I don't know. You know, like I said, I have absolutely no dog in this fight. I think at this point, all these people are crazy as hell. And the fact that we were, we've been waiting for 2020 for the truth to come out, and we are no closer to knowing the truth. Like, this is insane. This is the third day of testimony, and we are literally no closer to knowing the truth. You got one person invoking the Fifth Amendment. The other person talking about she don't know she was drunk. It's just, it's crazy. Tori's team is just talking about who she's fucking. Who cares? Who shot her? Child, let me read some of these super chats. A mess. A straight up mess. Uh, let's see here. Afros and hookah send five says, I bet you whack 100 got gun as paperwork already. Yeah, but ain't he kicked off a clubhouse? He tried to interview Kanye this weekend looking for attention and they shut his whole clubhouse down. So I don't even know if he's back on clubhouse. He might be, but I know they were shut down for a while. Clubhouse even released a statement saying that they had kicked out everybody that had allowed Kanye on the platform. So child, I don't know, but he'll, he'll probably, he probably do got the paperwork though. You know what? Um, let's see here. ES461 says, help, my little Discord wings got clipped last month. I've been sick ever since, LOL. My bank account was frozen due to unauthorized activities and pay and the payment didn't process. Please let me back in. <laughs> Sound like Kanye. My account is frozen. <laughs> it's all good. Send me an email with your Discord name and this YouTube name here, this ES4611. Um, and I'll get you over to the right people. So thank you so much. Um, let's see here. Miss J sent 20. Thank you, Miss J. Appreciate you. Uh, BL Sherelle, what's up, sis? She says, Tori knew he had Kelsey in the pocket this whole time. That's why he's been cheesing and walking out the courtroom every day. Shake my head. Love you, sis. Yeah, something, something ain't right. Because he's very self-assured. And like I said, his only the only thing his defense team needs to do is create reasonable doubt. And the fact that Megan has been out here talking and they have her on camera lying to Gail King because then they have to admit that she did sleep with Tori, that's leaving reasonable doubt in, in the jury, you know? Because again, people might be thinking, well, she can lie about something like this. Who's to say she's not lying on him, you know? So the whole situation just makes no sense. That's why I said from jump, not, like this is a real criminal trial. Why keep getting online and talking about something that's a criminal case? Allow it to play out in the court of law, you know? So yeah, the, the whole thing is crazy. Somebody says they think Meg shot herself. I mean, if they were all fighting over the gun, you know, like I said, that's just me thinking, I don't know. You know, it, it could have been a possibility, who knows? Because the whole thing just does not even make any sense. Even them saying that he stood over the Escalade and was shooting over the Escalade, as short as he is, that could have been a potential headshot. Like even like the description of worth of, of the shots, it doesn't make any sense. How'd he go from shooting on this side over the Escalade to them being in front of her saying dance, bitch, and then shooting? I, I don't, it's, it's just not making sense to me. I need somebody to draw this out because it's it, the math is not math. And maybe, you know, my head ain't, you know, thinking correctly. It's it's not making sense. It's just weird. OK, good. I'm not the only one who's confused. Yeah, because I'm like, OK, they were just saying he was reaching over the Escalade, but he's only five foot three. And if he's that short, I would think he'd be shooting straight up and that bullet could come down and, you know, God forbid, hit her in the head. It, it doesn't make sense. 
Then we go from that to, you know, dance, bitch, pow, 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 like Yosemite Sam. But then nobody's talking about this fight with this nail. Whose nail is this? Has the nail been DNA tested? Nails don't just fall off. That's from a fight. It doesn't make sense. Well, hopefully the damn driver will, will you know, state his piece. Because we haven't heard nothing from him. Now, a lot of people are saying, you know, Kylie's supposed to come and Corey Gamble. I don't know if Kylie's going to come. If she comes, I'm here for her. But this is why I don't know she will come. Because, again, if she comes and she testifies, then you'll have a segment of the population screaming, protect all black women. And this white girl's trying to take down a black woman. And then she has to worry about being seen as a racist. So Kylie may not come because, you know, social media hoodie. You know, they might attack her and say that she's coming for black women, even though she's just there to testify. So I, I don't know. It's a double-edged sword for Kylie. <laughs> she might be better off just having Corey up there. You know, so that's going to be interesting to see if she does come. Yeah, the whole thing is crazy. It, it just does not make any sense. Because I really thought I would, like, leave with, like, more more info and feel like more comfort in, in Kelsey's, uh, you know, in Kelsey's statements. But her invoking the Fifth Amendment makes me feel like, well, bitch, after his drunk ass was like, dance, bitch, did you pick up the gun and say, bitch, keep dancing, pow, pow, did you shoot the other two shots? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. If you had nothing to do with it, there's nothing to invoke. And the thing is, she's pleading because she doesn't want what she says to be used against her that can charge her. It's very strange. Very, very strange. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what to think. The whole thing is it's, it's, a, it's a twister right now in my mind. Um, let's see here. Taylor Jordan sent 10 says, love you, T. I will catch the playback. Keep spilling the tea because this tea is what? Piping hot. Thank you so much. Appreciate you coming through. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Quentin sent five says, hey, girl, can you give a shout out to my bestie Cedric and Jazan for the longest thought your name was Super Chat. LOL. Love you. OK, shout out to Cedric and Jazan. Thank you so much for coming through. Appreciate y'all. Um, let's see. My page is refreshed. Hold on. Let's see if I can scroll back up. Uh, Potato Head Sin 5 says she lied. He's not a body you claim. The leprechaun with dried up <laughs> unlucky charms. Oh, my gosh. Um, TJ says, hey, T and the Discord family. Having issues sending you super chats. Love you. And Tory Lane's defense attorneys must be tea sippers. Yeah, I'm very shocked at like how much all this stuff I've been saying just on the outside, you know, watching and, and piecing things together in their rap beefs, in the music that Kelsey has put out, Megan has put out, and Tori has put out. How it's funny how all of this is playing out on trial. But I told y'all a lot of this was behind Dick. It's just what it is. Now, again, you know, does it negate if she, if they prove again that she was shot by either Tori or Kelsey, um, you know, they should do the time. So Kelsey won't, but at least Tori. So it's going to be very interesting. It, it's it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out because this, none of this is making sense. It's, it's just not. Mm. But she did look good, though. I did lie. I was here for the purple suit. Megan did look good going to court yesterday. I will give her that. Um, let's see here. TJ Sin5 says Meg Smollett is a clown. <laughs> uh, Sore Demand says you think Rock Nation got to Kelsey? Mm. I don't know. I do not know. But I, I find that very strange as he's pleading the fifth. I can't ignore that. That don't sit well with my spirit. Because again, when you're innocent, especially as much as Kelsey's been drugged through the mud, I, by both parties, really, because they both have been trying to use her to basically solidify their side, right? So she owes no loyalty to Meg and she owes no loyalty to Tori. So it's, it's very strange. 
Very strange. Um, Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, I like how you spell that. Bonnie and Clyde says, I wonder if Tori is trying to break up the fight by shooting all over the place and he actually hit Meg. Mm. It could be a possibility. You know, people do ignorant shit like that in the hood. Um, where people will like pull out guns to, you know, pop, pop, you know, to get people's attention, not realizing that what goes up must come down. Like you could have killed everybody at the damn party because you want to get people's attention. That could be a possibility too. Maybe these two were fighting like two wild horses in the wild, wild west. Just, you know what I mean? Just blows, coming straight to blows. He's a little man. He can't jump in between these two big stallions. So he pulled out the gun, was like, pow, pow, pow. <laughs> you know, who knows? Who knows? We'll see, child. We will see as more comes out, okay? Um, let's see here. Uh, Nails World says, exactly, T. They most definitely paid her off. Wow. Um, what's up, Larry Reed? Larry Reed sent $50. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, love. Um, Tom Tim Media sent 1999 says, it's giving who done it the hip hop version. It really is. Like, like I said, I was so frustrated once the information came out because I'm like, we're not any closer to solving this mystery. What in the Scooby do is going? Like, do we have to feed them Scooby snacks? Just tell us what happened. It does not make sense. I've never been so frustrated. Because we're just waiting for the truth here, okay? That's all we want is the truth. It's clear something happened. We're not going to deny that something happened to her foot, okay? She was, you know, hopping up and down. There was blood on the ground. So something happened to her foot. Was it a bullet? Was it ricocheted, you know, snap roll, snap roll, whatever you call it? We don't know, but something did happen to her. We're not going to deny that. But the reason why we're here is we need to know, was Tori the shooter? Who done it? Was it Mr. Mustard? Was it Miss Violet? Y'all remember that? Y'all remember Clue? <laughs> Who done it? And at this point, now you got one of the main witnesses talking about, I plead the fifth. No, no, we didn't ask for this. We need you to plead the truth, not the fifth. So I, something ain't right. Something is not right. Now I'm, I'm starting to think now, do we need to, you know, do we need to call you Kelsey Salzavar? Okay, well, you're trying to pull a Yolanda because you found out Meg was smashing Tori and that's the third guy that y'all done shared unbeknownst to you. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying something ain't right. Something is not right with the situation. Uh, let's see here. SD said 99 says a supposed ex of Tori released text of him harassing her years ago. He pulled a gun on rapper Dax while filming and tried to fight Travis Scott on camera. Tori's been a menace. I guess that's attractive. I remember that Travis Scott situation. Oh, yeah. Little man Tori was trying to punk big, tall Travis. That's why I'm surprised Kelsey even had him at the house. Not Kelsey. Excuse me. Kylie. Kylie was being messy, too, because remember, that's when her and Travis were broken up. So she probably invited Tori and the gang to come through. You know, they, they go live on social media because she know her baby daddy's watching. Who remembers when Tori tried to beat up Travis Scott? And Travis Scott was acting scared of little Tori. Y'all not ready for that conversation. Yes, Tori and Travis got into it a long time ago. He was trying to put hands on Travis. Travis didn't want no little man smoke. Um, that's why I was found it funny that Kylie would have him at her house. And you know he done disrespected your baby daddy. Kylie messy. But y'all swept him down. She innocent. Y'all remember when Kylie took that picture of her toe in the water? Kylie is messy. But because she's quiet and, you know, and whatever, she's a mogul. Y'all don't give her the messy. Y'all don't put her in the messy category. Kylie's very messy. Okay. Yeah, I remember she took a picture of her toe after Megan's, you know, foot incident. Mm -hmm. Kylie been messy. Oh, yeah, we can also add August Alcina and <laughs> that spicy picture he took. <laughs> Y'all remember you punched August Alcina in the mouth and August Alcina took that spicy ass selfie? <laughs> With blood on his lip. I said, really, August? <laughs> yeah. Tori's been a little menace out here in these streets. You know, he went from demon time to, you know, God is so good. 
God is so good. God is so good. He takes care of me. Y'all know I'm ready for the gospel song. Remember, he was Mr. Demon Time in 2020, honey, trying to fight everybody. Child, he about God now. Uh, let's see here. VSM5 says, Meg's lies to protect her image and body counts are hurting her. Uh, Kelseyville took the money. Tori's a million dollars broker. Prosecutors failed to prep Meg. Mm, that's interesting. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Z Ashe says, I think Tori uh, Lane's paid Kelsey off. Thank you for the super chat, love. Isis Nail by Isis says, I love your commentary. Been a fan for five years. Many blessings. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thanks for the support. Um, let's see here. Jazina, Jasnia says, I'm confused too. Meg keeps trying to make Tori the sole shooter. Why is Meg protecting Kelsey? Yeah, and that was another thing, too. She said she didn't see Kelsey. She only saw Tori. Something, it's like none of them are making any sense. It just, it's really weird. None of them are making sense. Uh, Pop Loke says, there's been an update from the lawyer from the shade room. Okay, let's see here. Let me go. We got some more breaking news, child. Let's see what he's talking about. Thank you for the super chat. Let me pull up the shade room here. There we go. Let's see what the shade room is saying. Okay, so this must be another one, uh, another person in the courtroom. Let me read this first. Okay, let me show y'all this lawyer here. This is another guy who's in the courtroom. Okay, so this is what this person is saying. On afternoon break at Tory Lane's trial, Kelsey's testimony has been a lot of I don't recalls. At least one more failed attempt to plead the fifth. She's saying she doesn't remember things that she said to the prosecutors during a September interview, which was recorded. Critically, she wouldn't confirm she saw Lanes with the gun, which she said in the recorded interview, or that Lanes threatened to shoot her, which she said in the recorded interview. Recordings have been played in court. Harris says she's struggling with postpartum depression and a recent death in the family, and her mind isn't here right now. She also denied Lanes offered her hush money, which Meg alleged that he did to the tune of $1 million yesterday. The judge has directed at this time that the jury cannot consider the recordings of Harris's prior interview with the, DA office, with the DA's office as evidence. Ooh. Our interview was not 100% truthful, Harris said of her prior interview, though she hasn't said what specific is inaccurate. She has flat out denied shooting at Megan. Yes, yeah, something ain't right. Something ain't right. Let me see if he says something else.
Child, let me come back on the screen, honey. Oh my God. This tea is what? Pumping hot. This is a mess. Oh, hold on. Turn am back on. Hold on. Turn this off. This is a mess. It didn't have any sound? Oh, damn. Y'all didn't. I'm sorry. I thought it was playing. Why didn't I show it? Why didn't I play the sound? Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, let me play it for y'all again. I don't know why it's doing this. I hate this new version of StreamYard. Hold on. Let me, uh, y'all gotta listen to this. Y'all gotta listen to this. I'm gonna play it again. I'm sorry. I was, I was so intrigued. I wasn't even looking at the damn chat. Let me play it again. I don't, I hate this StreamYard version. Should have just kept this shit the same. I was wanting to upgrade shit. Just leave stuff how it's been, StreamYard. Damn. Let me know if y'all can hear. And it gets crazier. We are on a 15 minute break. Got to get back into the courtroom very quickly. I sat at 12 o'clock directly in Kelsey's line of vision. I watched her testify. I watched her deny that Tori threatened to shoot her. I watched her confess that she lied to the police when she said that. The reason why she was lying to the police, the investigators, is because she wanted to protect herself. O-M-G. The rest of the testimony that we just saw in the after lunch session was a prosecutor holding on for dear life to a recording between her, a police investigator and another L.A. County prosecutor and Kelsey and just replaying that recording and saying, Kelsey, didn't you say this? And Kelsey saying, I did. Kelsey, is that true? And Kelsey saying, no, I lied. Did the L.A. County prosecutors give Kelsey immunity? I think so. They did, didn't they? That's what I reported this morning. That's what I saw in this courtroom. Does Kelsey sound like a believable witness? No. <laughs> Is Tory Lanez accusing her of being the shooter? Yes. I'll tell you something. That jury, most of them, it looked like they had their mind made up. I don't know which way, but they saw that person say that I lied about all that to protect myself. They're going to hear that there was gunshot residue on her. And it gets crazier. We are on a. All right, y'all. I'm sorry about that, that it didn't play earlier. Cause like I said, he was doing, he had me enthralled, honey. I was like, fuck the chat. I'm watching him. But um, this is a mess. This is a mess. He said, Kelsey is not credible. They've already proven that she's had the gunpowder residue on her. And then she says she lied in September to protect herself. So. Tori may get off, y'all. I hate to say it. Tori may get off. And it's going to be because even if Kelsey wasn't the quote-unquote shooter because Meg is saying that she didn't see Kelsey, Kelsey is laying reasonable doubt for Tori. Plus, she had gun residue on herself as well. Gun residue didn't have any gun residue on them was Megan. And the fact that she is invoking her Fifth Amendment and most likely it's due to the gun residue. Something is not right. She wants to blame postpartum and, you know, and I get that. But still, the truth is the truth. And postpartum or losing a family member shouldn't define whether you speak the truth or not. So this is extremely disturbing. So now... I'm trying to play this in my head as to how it could have went. Did she wrestle the gun from Tori? Was she upset? Because they're all drunk as a skunk. The two girls are fighting. Tori's yelling, dance, bitch, while letting out shots. Did she grab it? Y'all know y'all Texans love y'all's guns and shit. I'm just saying. I know them Texas girls, they know how to shoot. Guns are legal down there. I don't know, man. This is. Yeah, this is disturbing. Because, again, we're no we're no closer than we were three days ago when all this came out. This is going to be putting a lot of doubt in the jury's heads. They're not going to be they're not going to easily find him guilty 
based off of this wonky ass testimony from not only Megan, because there were certain things that she couldn't recall, but Kelsey, who was one of the main witnesses. So the only hope for Megan's team right now is that hopefully the driver who is paid by Tori, because it's Tori's driver, ends up being honest. Because even with all that said, even if, if Kylie comes and, and Corey Gamble comes, they weren't at the shooting. Only they can talk about what happened at Kylie's house. Oh, yeah, and the neighbor. Hopefully the neighbor who they were fighting in their driveway, who, you know, the nails and the jury and shit was in his driveway. Hopefully the neighbor may have heard or saw something because they're because the neighbor's supposed to be testifying as well. This is crazy. This is this should have been on television. And oh, yeah. Oh, shout out to all the Johnny Depp fans who were cussing me out in my other comments. The Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial wasn't boring. It was boring to me. OK, I speak for me alone. It was OK, but it wasn't like because I guess maybe because I've been covering this and I've been saying from day one that Amber Heard wasn't shit. And I've been breaking this down for the past two years before they went to trial. So for me, I didn't care. I knew she was guilty and that he'd be found innocent. So to me, it was boring. But y'all Johnny Depp fans, y'all come out every six months to cuss me out. I was looking at all these damn Johnny Depp fans. It wasn't boring. You always going in on Johnny Depp. Shut up. <laughs> I don't give a damn. This trial seems more fun to me than Johnny Depp's trial. That trial was born as so you got this crazy bitch talking about my dog got stung by a bee. And then Johnny's like, she pooped in the bed. I'm sorry. This is just a bunch of crazy cockamamie bullshit. I want to see the damn Megan and Tory trial on TV. This is what should have been aired is this trial. I appreciate Mo and his recaps, but damn it, I want to see it for myself. <laughs> Them Johnny Depp fans be coming for me, hoodie. Anytime I, if, I, if I'm not talking about him in a favorable light, oh, they gonna get mad. How dare you say his trial was boring? Oh, it gave me something to watch for two weeks. Well, that's fine. I found it boring because I told y'all two years before the trial, the bitch was crazy and that the grass wasn't green on the other side. And I'm about to sit here and uh, shed tattoo tears for Johnny like that. It was messed up. Amber Heard ain't shit. But Johnny was with his baby's mother for 14 years. Never married that woman. Left her because she got old. Okay? And then went out with this young girl who was batshit crazy. Everybody told Johnny not to mess with Amber. But he found out that day that fat meat was greasy. So I'm not about to cry tattoo tears for Johnny. He'll be all right. Okay? Anyways, I want to see this shit on television. That's what I want to see on television shit. Damn, I wish I could have seen that. She's just out here lying. And admitting to lying. And see, the prosecutors, Meg's team, they were hoping to use that, that audio of Kelsey saying that it was Tory. But the judge says, y'all can't use that audio. This is, this is crazy. This is crazy. Damn, man. Yeah, you know, you know, no disrespect to Johnny Depp. I mean, Johnny Depp is cool. I'm just not gonna, you know, I'm not crying tattoo tears over Johnny Depp. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. You know, he's getting his jobs back. Like I said, Amber Heard has just been a lunatic. Everybody knew it but him. The mama was telling him, not the mama, excuse me, the sister. You know, it was just so much stuff that came out during the trial. Like everybody saw that this woman was crazy and wasn't shit. But because she was young and, you know, up and coming, he threw all common sense out the window. You know, sad. Um, I don't know, man. This child got me shook. I wasn't expecting all this tea. I wasn't when I started this stream. I've been on here now for an hour and thirty-eight minutes. I wasn't expecting it to go this way. I really thought Ky uh, Kelsey was going to come and just drop some bombs and you know just state her side. Remember, all the past year, I'm waiting till trial. I'm gonna speak at trial. I'm stating my st I'm stating my side. My truth will come out during trial. Then the trial starts. I plead the fifth. Wait, no, bitch. You cannot plead the fifth. We need to hear your truth. You can't plead the fifth and say that you lied in September. It's not what you promised us. Damn it, Kelsey Salzivar. <laughs> Damn. So I don't know, man. We're just going to have to watch this whole thing play out. I'm upset.
Because I thought we'd be a lot closer to the answers by now, but it looks like we're not. We're not any, we're not any closer at all. That sucks. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, Jackie Dixon sent 1999 says, hey, T, just want to leave a super chat. I'll catch a playback. Love you, girl. Thank you. I think I read that earlier. Um, Therapy Queen sent $200. Thank you so much, Therapy Queen. She says, T, just stopping by to say you're awesome. Not much. Just wanted to give you a Christmas gift for all your hard work. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank you so much, sis, and Merry Christmas to you and your family as well. Thank you for coming through and always support my channel. I appreciate you. Uh, let's see here. Dream of Nita Caster says, they should have tested their hands instead of their clothes because powder goes everywhere, but on the hands, it really shows. So were, was their hands not tested? Because that's what I'm assuming that the residue would have came from, from them testing their hands. That doesn't make any sense why they wouldn't test their hands. My hands have been tested walking through TSA. Oh, uh, ma'am, we need to test your hands for gun residue, bitch. I don't even touch guns. Why, why, why do you need to test my hands? Somebody tell me they can test my hands going through TSA, but these three people are at this crazy ass shooting. We got nails on the ground. We got jury everywhere and they just test their clothes. They should. I'm sure their hands were tested, y'all. Come on. So Meg wasn't tested. People are saying that their hands were tested. I'm sure their hands were tested. If TSA can test your hands, I'm sure the police, I'm sure LAPD tested their hands, not just their clothing. But yeah, this case is crazy. Some, oh, it's crazy. Um, Bonnie and Clyde says, now do you, now I believe Tori paid off Kelsey because what the F? Yeah, something ain't right. Something is not right with this testimony from Kelsey. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Shamrells uh, says they were fighting over that gun. Tori is getting off on reasonable doubt. Mm. And, and even think about it. After this whole situation, they were never friends again. Ever. It's been beef ever since. So maybe... You know, it's a situation where maybe Kelsey was trying to take her out. This is crazy. The world is a stage and we're all actors. You know what I'm saying? Because this don't make no sense. Um, Miss A. Hunt, hey, sis. Sam Five says, at this point, all Tori has to do is go on the stand and tell the truth because both of them are proven liars. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, Meg's been caught in a few lies and Kelsey just admitted to lying in September. Damn, this is crazy. Mm. Uh, Nails World says, T, I think they're doing it on purpose for a mistrial. Yeah, it could be. It could be. Bigger Than Myself says, what happened to the security footage from the estates from that night? Who is Kelsey's baby daddy? Why give Kelsey immunity? I forget who her baby's dad is. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but I think he's like in the industry, but he's not like a rapper or something. He like works behind the scenes, but I forget what he does. But yes, yeah, something, something ain't right. Gemini says, what about Kelsey saying Tori shot Meg? Well, that's what that's what she's saying now is that it was postpartum. She lost a family member. She was depressed and that everything she said prior is all lies. That's what's bugging everybody out, including the lawyer. It's like, wait, what? So I don't know. Maybe they are going for a mistrial on purpose because none of it makes sense. El Hall says Meg did that talking about how everyone is going to eat her words when the facts come out. But the story is sounding more and more confusing. Her credibility is down bad with me. Yeah. Child, you know, Meg gonna get online and win in and nay. I, I, at this point, I, I don't pay her too much attention. Um, I just wanted it to play out in court. And at this point, this court case is bullshit. This is ridiculous. How we are no closer. It's just... <laughs> Rooted in love says that horse been lying. <laughs> None of this makes sense. Like I said, something happened to her foot. We're not going to deny that. But um, it is too much. It's too much at this point. And then for Kelsey to just come on and say she lied in September. 
Yeah, it's it's time to look like you know, cut like checks for cut. I'm just saying. It's starting to look like you know, a, a possible check was cut. You know, when they cut them checks, all of a sudden, you know, remember the one that was accusing Tiffany Haddish of all types of you know lascivious acts? They cut that check all of a sudden. Tiffany Haddish is my best good friend. Tiffany Haddish would never hurt a soul. Tiffany Haddish is a good, good black woman. I said, oh, that check was cut, huh? You know what? Some checks get cut. Don't nobody see or hear shit. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Oh, man. Makia says, I think Kelsey found out about Meg screwing Tori. Meg and Kelsey fought. Tori might have put out the gun to break them up. Kelsey tried to shoot Meg out of anger. And they accidentally shot Meg. Yeah, it's starting to look like that. It's starting to look like, like somebody else might have been responsible for what happened to her foot. Because this is crazy. This is crazy. Yeah, there was there was definitely some type of check or something cut at this point. I mean, the fact that she's saying that she lied about her testimony. When you do those depositions, <coughs> excuse me, you're under oath to tell the truth. That's no different than being on the court, you know, in a court of law. The deposition, you're supposed to be there to tell your truth. So for her now to get in the courtroom, be like, well, I lied. Everything I said back then was a lie. Yeah, something ain't right. It's, it's giving Tory's side a lot of ammo. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens tomorrow. Yeah, this is crazy. Um, let's see here. Uh, Corn Pops Force Ghost. That's an interesting name. Says, we need a law and order ripped from the headlines edition from this trial. Yeah, they'll probably they probably will be remaking it. They might as well since we weren't able to be there in the trial. So now before I go, because I've been out here for over an hour, we got to talk about this situation with Sir Derek Jackson, okay? So Derek Jackson, I didn't know this man until his bonnet of salvation cheating scandal last year. Um, he had cheated his wife. Excuse me. We didn't even know this woman. A lot of people did not know he was married from what I saw from a lot of his female fans. They didn't know he was married. They didn't know he had a daughter. Um, but it came out and him and the bonnet of salvation, they wanted to like work it out. And so then over the weekend, he decided to tell everybody that he was going to divorce her. And I legit don't know this lady's name. I think it's like Danny, Danae or something. But let me share my screen. This is what he he took to social media to write this mush mouth bullshit. Um, okay, here we go. All right, relationship expert Derek Jackson announces divorce from wife. <laughs> can't break this. <laughs> can't break this up. All right, so he says. Over the past several months, my family and I have gone through many changes. Some of you have speculated while others have reached out to offer support. We privately established this new normal for ourselves and our beautiful children. Earlier this year, after much prayer, counseling, and deep consideration, we decided to go our separate ways and file for divorce. Making the decision to file was one of the hardest decisions of my life, but I found peace knowing that our mission of raising healthy children, starting with healthy whole parents, is still being accomplished. From falling in love just as teenagers to becoming spouses and now co-parents, I'm grateful for the years we spent together and wouldn't trade them for anything. I was blessed to have such an amazing person in my life and I will forever be thankful for all she's meant to our family. We ask if you pray to please pray for us as we navigate this grieving process. If not, please respect our privacy. Sir, I will be saving my prayers for shit that matters. Your, your divorce is not one of them. So this is what I wrote. You know, I have to write something, child. You know, I was coming to my comment section. Because a lot of this stuff I don't even know is being posted. I'm a, I'm a fan like everybody else. I come on, I see what's going on, I leave a comment, I leave. So I said this. I said the sad thing is that these low self-esteem, that some of these low self-esteem 
uh, black women made this trash ass king a millionaire, which gave him the funds to floss and trick off on other women, all the while forgetting to mention that he was even married. This black king cheated on his black hidden wife, and now he's back writing another dissertation. I swear folks online will exalt any weirdo on the internet with the mouthpiece. I'm glad I never heard of this man until his bonnet of salvation cheating scandal. Hopefully this black woman will find some self-esteem and move on to somebody who's not afraid to claim her in public. Shaking my head. So that's what I wrote. <laughs> 2000 hype called it the bonnet of divorce. <laughs> so like I said, it's, it's sad. And th this is why I say, you know, not every woman necessarily wants to be married. And especially if it's, you know, what, where they have to help build up a man just for the man, you know, once he's established and rich and built up. Now you want to leave the person who's been down with you and, and helping you build your brand since you were a teenager um, to now tricking off with Internet thotties. Right. You know, very, very Christian of you, uh, Mr. Jackson. Um, so then I found out that the bonnet of salvation was out here cursing people. She was sending all types of hexes and weirdo shit. I was like, what the fuck? Let me find her her curse. Yeah, she was like going off and cursing folks. Like, what is this about? You know, I felt bad for her because she was a hidden, long struggling wife. But they said this was last week. She was cursing folks. Putting Bible curses on folks. This is insane. This is the wife. Against the names Danaea Jackson and Derek Jackson in mockery, accusation, slanders, and lies. Made them we need to hear her from the beginning. Let me hit refresh. Can y'all hear? Make sure y'all let me know if y'all can hear. Okay. Every person speaking against the names Danaea Jackson and Derek Jackson in mockery, accusation, slanders, and lies. May the mercies of God be withdrawn from you. May your husbands and wives become widows. Let your children become fatherless. Let your seed become vagabonds on the earth. Let the words of your mouth and your words of your hands be returned back to you. Let it go down your throat and choke you slowly until your days become few on the earth. The word of God says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You've been warned. And if you want to know where that is at in the Bible, go to Psalm 109. Go to Psalm 35, go to Psalm 140, go to Psalm 141 and keep our names out of your mouth in the name of Jesus. Have a blessed day. I'm sorry, but let me come back on the screen so y'all can see my face. That's my first time fully watching that. I had heard she put out a curse. I never watched it. I just, you know, grabbed the clip. I said I would watch it live. That was some demonic ass shit. And I get tired of Christians doing mess like this. And then they, oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name. No, no, no. Jesus and God does not tell people to curse other people because they have an opinion on your trash ass husband. You're cursing and wishing that people become widowers. Are you serious? You're wishing death on people because they have an opinion of your trash ass husband who doesn't know how to keep his pen in his pants and not, and, and you know, claim you publicly. This woman is insane. And the sad thing, these are people that y'all follow and y'all exalt. They're, they're trying to give people advice via Christian, you know, via like Christian, um, whatever, Christianity, right? They're trying to put all this advice on folks, but they're not even living what they're preaching. Like, what the hell is this? How do you put curses on people like that? That is, that is really sad. Her anger is misdirected. You need to put that curse on your husband and his new side chick, okay? Because the internet didn't do anything to you. Your husband disrespected you and your children. Your husband kept you hidden all these years and your children, might I add. Because for him, it was better, it was better for him to come off like a single sexy man <clears throat> than someone who was tied down to the bonnet of salvation. This woman is crazy. That was very wicked and demonic. I don't care what anybody says. There was nothing okay with what she just said. That was very disturbing. So now, um, of course, they're the butt of jokes. So there's uh shout out to Devin Brown. 
Devin from Discord. Um, he sent me these clips of this young man going in on Derek Jackson, the wife and, and uh, his newfound love. So we're going to go ahead and listen to this man here. Yeah, that oh, that was disgusting. I'm very disappointed in her. So let me go ahead and play this video here. All I see is ass, 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 ass. Sorry. <laughs> No, that ain't mister. I'm all about Christ, Derek, dip him down, booty, butt, crunch and munch. Jackson! And got caught out there in Florida. I see why you got all that new Miami Vice wardrobe. Derek is the ultimate Super Saiyan level villain in a Tyler Perry movie. He is all them dark skinned bad guys combined in one. Woo! Derek Jackson was involved with other women outside the marriage. And Derek Jackson made an instant story post accountability, the fact or condition of being accountable responsibility and the side chick with sharp turkey leg hips said as a sagittarius i got five moods i don't know i don't care i don't give up shaking my head watch this how you mad he choosing me then follow that post with a song from little wayne you can disarm him with the blood of the lamb yeah, disarm the enemy you must have used the blood of a billy goat named lamb to disarm this one because dj was fully armed and equipped to lay down his pip i am the number one relationship in dating guru ojuku and the whole time Derek jackson been talking about himself as the man you should avoid ladies whoo this is like a his whole life in relationship is like an m night Shyamalan movie all you women is cheering him on and praising him for his advice while he humiliates his wife on a regular basis like bozo the clown should be ashamed of yourselves, but y'all not, because <laughs> he gives the best advice for those who hate accountability. I told you, Danae, you should have been praying for your family instead of out here cursing everybody because your husband is the one coming off these ceiling fans, shuttle throttle thrusting these women. So with the power of Mojito He-Man, you got to be one of the coldest in the game. Mr. Derek, I cheat on my wife to make a stronger Jackson. <laughs> What is the price that any woman can expect to have to pay for trying to love a broken man? We have this habit of glorifying dysfunction and toxicity at the hands of a man while simultaneously using that as a measurement stick of the worth of a woman. Boy, you one of the most committed coaches out there. You used your own spouse as a guinea pig to make sure your advice works. Not only did you use Christ to get her back so you can cheat on her some more, but you used religion to keep her in bondage. Sort of what Nat Turner did before he revolted and rebelled. Uh, ladies, let me tell you what he just did. He used God in the church to get her back so that she would not leave on her terms so he could buy himself some more time to get his affairs in order so when she does decide to leave, it will be on his terms. Who he done put that woman through it. Had her out here looking like a no-limit Jehovah Witness soldier to now where she looking like a Harry Potter recruiting scout for Hogwarts, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and Hufflepuff. Used Jesus to keep the mother of his children in bondage to that marital disaster while he was out here bestroking off stroking these charlatans. DJ's mistress responds to everything that has transpired. Woke up to a lot. <laughs> Can't answer all the calls. I'm busy. Yes, I see what's going on. Please mind the business that pays you. Denea admitted to seeing his erotic tape. She has seen his homemade adult film debut where he was pogo sticking it to a dark skinned woman. And this was her response to people talking about how do you deal with all the attention your husband gets from all the women, you're strong, I applaud you. She goes on to describe about how she went on a rampage through the phone gallery and seeing videos you cannot see, uh, videos and pictures of women she knew and videos of women she didn't. She know. stated in an IG post, because I have the spirit of obsession, this creature had me in forever loop of studying film of these women sexually. My sight will be hyper-focused on the consistency of their body fluid during penetration. And with this spirit of comparison, it added two cents telling me, you don't secrete like this. So she claimed in the IG post when this first happened. He done put that woman through so much, I wouldn't be surprised if she came out the closet as a non-binary, bi-gender, pan-asexual, femme, Maverick lesbian. Got his Aaron Hall New Jack Swing suit on like baby, baby, sweet doo dee dee. This is part of Derek's divorce now. Earlier this year, after much prayer counseling and deep consideration, we decided to go our separate ways and file for divorce. Making the decision to file was one of the hardest decisions in my life. This is also Derek as well. What spelled out was bullshit. But I don't accept that apology. It's not enough that your family's well-being and structure is on the line. It's not enough that you took vows. It's not enough that you have this woman's heart and this humili her, her, her reputation and the ability to be humiliated. 
Apologies like this one right here. Increase the damage. That's why I can't. All right, let me come back on the screen. Oh boy, was funny as hell. He was going in. You know, and I think that's the sad part is that men like Derek prey on like, especially black women who are just looking for love. They just want to be loved. They want to find a good man. And sometimes they feel like, you know, it's something wrong with them, you know, something that they're doing. And he he basically, you know, preys on vulnerable women like that. Because women with any type of self-esteem and self-worth, they're not going to these online gurus for dating advice. And, you know, the sad part is he talked a lot about Kevin Hart and Kevin Hart's indigression, um, you know, indigressions while he was doing the same thing on his wife that nobody knew about. But what I also find interesting about this situation is, isn't it interesting that the woman that he left his wife for is not from the cloth of God. She's gassed up. Oh, y'all need to stop calling me. Mind the business that pays you. But this is the same woman. This is the same archetype that Derek Jackson talks about when he's trying to, you know, feed the low self-esteem women. Carry yourself with respect. Don't dress like a thought. You know what I'm saying? A man will never marry you if you act this way or move this way. But it's funny that he left his wholesome wife for what is an IG thought. And I'm going to call her a thought because she knew he was married. And again, it goes back to women not respecting other women. She knew he was married. But again, because he has power, prestige, he's, you know, famous online, he has money, she doesn't care. And that's what I was saying earlier when I was talking about Diddy. These men get away with it because a lot of women, they don't care. They're cool with being kept. They're cool with being the side chick. As long as it, as long as they're being taken care of, they're fine with that. That's why I said not every woman is looking to be a wife. Not every woman is looking to be a Miss Derek Jackson. They're here for a fun time, not a long time. So you got to know the difference. So while she's up here cursing everybody and, you know, uh, wishing death on folks, her husband is running around here living his best life with his thigh. <coughs> you can't make this shit up. Yeah, he's definitely a narcissist. And I just think that that's the sad part because it was so, even after it came out that he cheated on his wife and disrespected his wife, people should have really left him alone then. People should have stopped because I haven't heard of this man. I don't go looking for him. I didn't know of this situation until this came out. But to see that he still had fans, people were still watching, people were still, you know, invested in him is insane. So now that he's left the wife for something new, now these same women are upset. But he was only telling you guys what he wanted you guys to know and what you guys wanted to hear that made you feel good. He wasn't being honest. He was just running game. He was pandering and simping. And so when men would call this out, you had a lot of these women who were getting their feelings. Y'all are just Derek, uh, jealous of Derek. He's fine. He has a nice body, this and that. And it's like, nobody's jealous of him. He's running game on you. So that way y'all can sustain his lifestyle. It, it's not that deep. That's all he's doing. And now that he's left the, the you know, the, the wife um, for, the, for the new thing, now these women are upset. But these were the same women that were also chastising the wife and saying that she let herself go. And they were finding any reason during the whole affair when that came out, I believe in 2020, to blame her. Well, look how she's dressed. You got to keep yourself up. You know, um, she's just sitting there with a bonnet on. Look at the women that he's with as if it's her fault that he's cheating. Why do we do that to women? Why when a man wants to stray... And, and cheating, I don't care if he's cheating with a bad bitch or, 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 or a female that's shaped like a bus. If he wants to cheat, he's going to cheat. That is his issue. Why do we always make that the woman's issue? That doesn't make any sense. People are literally blaming her and saying she let herself go. And she basically chased her man off by not keeping herself up. So then she starts going to the gym. She's working. Y'all see her doing the little leg kicks and shit, trying to kick her leg. You know, she's in the gym working out every day, trying to lose weight. She's wearing her hair out now. No more bonded of salvation. And he still left her. It's 
So that don't got nothing to do with it. He was going to stray anyways. He has the money. He has the power. He has the influence. So now he's upgrading to a bad bitch. It's sad. It's, it's really sad. You know, so I'm not surprised, but that's what happens. That's why I say all the time, be careful who you build with. You know, because sometimes you can build with the wrong person. And once they get to a certain level of success and status, then it's them chucking you the deuces. So you have to be strong enough. If you're, if you're getting with somebody and they have less than you or you're helping to build them up, you better make sure that that investment is worth it. Because remember, Kanye left the Lexus. The black girl he was with when he was coming up, she taught him all about fashion and, you know, took him overseas to these fashion houses. You know, fashion was a Lexus's thing. Kanye leaves her upgrades, quote unquote, to Kim, teaches the Kardashians all about fashion and upgrading their style. Now they're living life. They're billionaires. She's, you know, running the streets with them none. You know, Gucci and all the top folks. Meanwhile, Kanye West, he about to be evicted out his... <laughs> he, he's facing eviction. I don't know if y'all heard this. I'm pulling my Instagram. He's facing eviction in his on his business in Calabasas. He's been renting out this business for a few years instead of just buying it outright and then renting it out himself. But, you know, that's too much like, right? Um, but, yeah, they're threatening to evict him. So again, be careful who you build with because I haven't seen any eviction notices posted for Kim Kardashian. Says here, Kanye West, Yeezy's company is facing eviction from their Los Angeles offices after the building owner accused the embattled rapper of owing at least two months of rent. This surprising development marks the latest financial problem Kanye has found himself in recently after being dropped from top brands like Adidas and Balenciaga. According to newly filed documents obtained by The Blast, the office building's owner, a company named C.T. Calabasas, accuses Kanye's Yeezy Apparel Company of being behind in at least two months of rent, totaling $63,254. They basically have 72 hours to vacate the property. Now, if he was a smart billionaire, he would have bought an empty office space. He could have easily got one for maybe $20,000 or even got a big office space and rented out the different rooms and made money. Like he has the money to do it. Why are we renting spaces and we're billionaires? See all that, all that bragging, but not moving right. You got regular people who know what to do. Give give half this chat a cool 60 grand and see how quick they flip it. So again, like I said, um, be careful who you build with. You know what I'm saying? Because right now the Kardashians are good. Meanwhile, he's facing eviction notices. Um, Derek Jackson, to me, it, it, it's sad. It's sad that he used this woman you know, for standing in the church and to look like a, you know, good husband. And now that, you know, he's done, he's moving on to the next one. So while she was out there cursing folks, she should have been focusing on her husband and his moves and sending curses his way. Because the audience didn't do anything to you. Matter of fact, it was the audience that provided the lifestyle that you and Derek became accustomed to. So instead of cursing the audience, be grateful that they even got y'all to the position, you know what I'm saying, to where y'all are at financially. So I, I just find the whole situation just sad. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, to me, he comes off like one of those dudes, probably growing up, he didn't have a whole lot. He was not the guy in high school. Don't let his new body fool you. You know, he's probably the guy that most females didn't really look at, hence why he ended up with the bonnet of salvation. Um, he was super happy. She was willing to, you know, date him and marry him. And then, you know, he started working out. He got a beautiful glow up because he's a handsome guy. I'm not going to take that from body on point, face on point. So he 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 got the glowing up. And now he don't forgot, you know what I'm saying, where he came from. See, the wife, the bond of the salvation is a reminder of when he was broke, overweight, and didn't have shit. The new thought that he's with, that's a reminder of how far he's come. 
a lot of men do this, not all, but you know what I'm saying? Once they get their glow up, they're, you know, all right, I'm out. Now they're with the new girl. So women got to watch out for that type of stuff. It's sad. Look at Perfect Nails talking about he not cute. Now, now, now you know I don't hate. Y'all Y'all stop being haters. That man's not ugly. He's a trash ass guy, but y'all know me. If somebody is handsome, they're hand, I'm not going to take th their looks from them just because, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't think he's an ugly guy. His body's on point, but he's a trash ass person. I'm not going to take their looks from them. I'm not going to be like, oh, he looks like Oscar the Grouch. No, he's a cute guy. We're not going to do that. Half y'all find Diddy fine, so stop. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, I just find those situations sad. Yeah, I, you know, like I said, he got his glow up. He got his glow up and it went to his head. You know, you have a lot of men who do that. You know, once they either have blown up, you know, with their body or their financial situation, um, they're out. They're out because this person that they started off with reminds them of when they were struggling, just like with Kanye. You know, Lexus was a beautiful woman, but, you know, he was with her when he was struggling and trying to figure out life. But now that he's reached a certain status, Kim Kardashian's status was way higher than hers. You know, not in moral character, of course, but, you know, as far as the mainstream media is concerned. So for him, that was an upgrade. You know, it happens all the time. Somebody said Diddy's money is fine. Oh, yeah, the money helps. Trust and believe. If Diddy was Sean the garbage man. You think these exoticals and young Miami will be fighting over him? Absolutely not. Let's keep that real. If Diddy had a few O's off of his uh, net worth, nobody would pay Diddy any mind. So that's why I say, you know, we need to like have real conversations and understand that a lot of women, you know, are with certain men because of the power and their financial standards. And that's just what it is. And there's nothing wrong with that. But let's just be honest and stop acting like everybody's there for, you know, for love. Somebody said Jermaine Dupree's another one. <laughs> Y'all are messy. <laughs> Y'all are messy. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh yeah, there's a lot of them that are only attractive because of money. There's quite a few. I'm not going to name any names. Y'all leave Jay-Z alone. Can't stand y'all. <laughs> That's be we're not gonna talk about Beyonce's husband on Beyonce's internet. Y'all leave Jay Z alone. Jay Z out here minding his business. Um, let me see here. Okay, before I go, because I've been on here for two hours. Oh my god, this has been a fun stream. I had some errands to run. It's almost seven o'clock. Y'all, child, the stores is about to close. It's all dark outside. It don't even feel like I've been on here that long. So we got to talk about uh white people news. Okay. Now, I notice a lot of y'all black uh, commentators ain't really been talking about this. Why am I the only black person speaking on Sam Bateman free? Why y'all not talking about this? This is good, good tea. Okay? Y'all need to be blasting him the same way y'all blast black folks news. Let this be a black person arrested. It be all over the shade room. This white boy done stole all this crypto money. He been out here doing clubhouse interviews and you know, going back and forth with YouTubers. I'm the only one covering this shit. But I, I like finance. So to me, it's I, I love it. From the time it broke, I've been talking about it on Discord. We had a whole Zoom meeting the day it broke. Like, get in here. We got to talk about this. Well, he's been arrested. And I'm here for it. So if y'all don't know, freaky old Sam Bankman Freed, who was having all these orgies. Yes, the man with the crazy hair. Oh, he was fucking his whole company. They had read, if y'all don't know, in their home in the Bahamas. All the employees lived there because one but 20 of them. And they would have wild group sex. Him and Gretchen Grundler, okay? Miss Ellison. They'd all be having, they were all like pansexuals. <clears throat> so him, Gretchen, all the employees, they'd just be sleeping together. I said, what in the sex ritual is going on here? Y'all are messing with crypto. Y'all are fucking each other in the office. What is this? What kind of ritual are we doing here? Okay, he's a freak. He's a certified freak. But, but remember, all these people swerving down because he was, you know, a wild, you know, he's just a young little white boy with the crazy hair and he drives a Toyota. Oh, he's so innocent. He sleeps on a beanbag. Yeah, while getting hair from everybody in his office. Anyways, he has been arrested.
watched it and I'm here for it. Um, let's go ahead and watch these videos of San Bankman Freed, Minnie Madoff. He's facing a lot of charges too. A lot, a lot of charges, man. They are not playing with him. Is this the video? Let me see. Because I had a few videos up on him. I think this is it, yeah. ...to what Sam Bankman Freed was tweeting in the days leading up to the bankruptcy there. Now, that's not to say that finance is anything like what was happening at FTX, but right. we don't know because these aren't regulated entities. And is this a buyer beware situation for anything that's an unregulated offshore entity? Mm -hmm. Um, that's probably fair. An, an offshore entity operated by people who are not providing complete transparency. Um, we don't know. And I wouldn't want to speculate about the condition of those. Now, we've got other exchanges that, I mean, Coinbase is a public I don't think this is the one because this dude is boring as hell. It might be this one. Let me see. Okay, here we go. Because that, oh, he was dry. Dry as hell. Okay, y'all can't hear? Hold on. Yes or no? No sound? Okay. This, the way they have it, it's just, it sucks. Hold on. Because that other guy was so dry. But I want y'all to hear this with sound, so let me go back to this screen. They should have just let this shit how it used to be. Let me see which one is this. Charged. Hold on. Okay. All right, let me play it over. I bail as he fights extradition back to the U.S., where prosecutors have charged him with a massive years-long fraud. Chief Business Correspondent Rebecca Jarvis is at the U.S. Attorney's Office here in New York. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, George. And that Bahamas judge denying Sam Bankman freed bail, the former poster child for transparency in crypto, considered a heightened flight risk. This morning, the founder of FTX, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world, waking up behind bars in the Bahamas, charged in a scheme that investigators say stole billions of dollars from customers and investors. This is one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. Sam Bankman fried denied bail as he faces SEC charges and eight counts of criminal fraud, including money laundering and wire fraud. He used that money for his personal benefit including to make personal investments and to cover expenses and debts of his hedge fund, Alameda Research. But in an interview with our George Stephanopoulos just two weeks ago, Bankman Freed repeatedly denied knowing FTX funds were being misused. Did you know that these funds were being funneled to Alameda? I did not know that there is any improper uh, use of customer funds. Bankman Freed's lawyer telling ABC News he's considering all his legal options. The 30-year-old founder, once celebrated as the poster child for transparency in crypto, partnering with celebs like Steph Curry and Tom Brady. His parents, Stanford law professors, by his side through its rise. His father even allegedly giving Bankman Freed legal advice and receiving payments. But then, nearly a month ago, FTX filing for bankruptcy. Bankman Freed stepping down as CEO and customers defrauded of over $8 billion, according to federal authorities. Entrepreneur Evan Luthra says he lost more than $2 million in FTX's crash. We do not plan to get scammed. What happened here was an outright case of fraud. On Tuesday, the new FTX CEO, John Ray, testifying on Capitol Hill, calling it embezzlement. This is just taking money from customers and using it for your own purpose. Ray also revealing how the company kept track of business using the chat app Slack and QuickBooks. Literally, you know, there's no record keeping whatsoever. They use QuickBooks, a multi-billion dollar company using QuickBooks. 
This is absolutely astounding for a company that was valued earlier this year at $32 billion. Today, the Senate will hold its own hearings on FTX. Sam Bankman fried will not be there. He continues to remain in the Bahamas and looks like he will fight that extradition. And then you have the new CEO of FTX telling Congress yesterday he'll do everything in his power to track down this money, but there are billions still missing. Sam Bankman fried was a major political donor. He invested in a number of companies, and now there are calls for those politicians and those businesses to give that money back. Michael? One and mm. Oh, the rabbit hole goes deep with the Sam Bank Bankman fried situation. Um, I think the part that got me is this idiot using QuickBooks. Now, no knock against QuickBooks. I've used them. But even I've gotten to the point where QuickBooks does not work for my business. I have to hire a CPA that goes through my account every month and balances my, you know what I'm saying, my account. Like I pay like 500 bucks a month, right? And she goes through my account. If I have a dedicated CPA for my little ass company, this man has a billion, like a multi-billion dollar company and he's using QuickBooks. Like I'm, I'm confused as to how nobody went to peel back this onion on how this company was even valuable, able to survive making money. It doesn't make any sense. Regular people use QuickBooks. People who work at KFC use QuickBooks. Why does he not have a whole bunch of CPAs and accountants checking the ins and outs of this? Oh, wow, because it's a scam. That's why he didn't want any financial people in his business because he was just helping himself. Another thing I find very interesting is, of course, everybody who works for him, the new CEO, everybody's going to try and put the blame on him. But all these people were aware, for the most part, of what was going on. It's just like the R. Kelly situation. Remember, as soon as he got into legal trouble, all of a sudden everybody was jumping ship. You know, nobody, oh, I've never seen anything. I didn't know nothing. You know, they went from that to, oh, uh, 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 R. Kelly married Aaliyah. <clears throat> R. Kelly had me recruiting girls at the mall. All of a sudden, they all wanted to speak to save themselves. And I feel like that's what's going on with all these people that worked at um, Alameda Research and for um, FXT, FTX, whatever the hell. Another thing that's very funny is he's complaining and he's saying he needs to be released from jail. Not because, you know, he's not guilty, you know, not because of like anything, you know, crazy. He thinks that he shouldn't be in jail because he's a vegan. Let me show you. You can't make this. This is just the most spoiled, pompous man. So he's currently in jail in the Bahamas. And he's, they said he tried to use his vegan diet to get released from jail after he was arrested. Um, basically, his lawyers are arguing that he should be released because of his vegan diet and reliance on several medications. What? Do you know how many folks go to jail and they have like real illnesses, cancer, uh, lupus? No one gives a shit about their diet. Nobody cares. Why should he even be allowed to be petitioned out because he's a vegan? This man is not even taking this situation seriously. He's literally trying to petition to be let out because of his diet. You can't make this up. Yes, it is the privilege of it all. Sounds about white. <laughs> He said, I got, I don't have this broccoli hair for nothing. But um, another thing that's very, very, I'm, I'm staying on top of this case. Another thing that's coming to light, <clears throat> and we talked about this last week, was all his political donations. Now, he did donate to both sides. A lot of people were saying that it was only the, the Democrats, but he definitely sent donations to the Republican Party as well. But he sent far more money to the Democratic Party. There's even a video of Miss Maxine Waters blowing him kisses on the Senate floor, which was just weird. Like, do you normally blow kisses at people? 
Oh, just the ones that grease your palm? Got it. So she's blown him kisses a year ago. He's donated millions of dollars. Um, his family, um, his mom, father, they've been big supporters of the Democratic Party for years. I believe as more stuff comes out, the last thing he will need to worry about is his vegan diet. He better hope he, he does not wind up stinking somewhere, to be honest with you. How many crypto people have wound up dead in the past less than two months? Me and Lady J talked about this on the most recent podcast. I think the more they appeal back on this situation and they see how many companies were involved and receive and were receiving basically stolen funds from him, it might lead them to put a, 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 a what is that called? A bounty on his head. So while he's worrying about a damn, you know, veggie plate, you better be worried about that damn bounty. Because you have a lot of people involved in this case that were receiving big money. This man was making changes with his money that affected the world. A lot of people tend to say, well, what's the difference between a millionaire and a billionaire? There's no difference. It doesn't matter. It definitely matters. Anybody can be a millionaire. Only a select few are billionaires. Billionaires make changes that change the world globally. That is the difference. Your neighbor could be a millionaire. He's not necessarily going to change the world. He can change his lifestyle. He can, you know, look out for his family. Billionaires change the world. And that's what this man was doing. So I have people like, there's no difference. It's just a zero. No, it's not. Learn the difference. But yeah, I just wish more black people were talking. I just, I find this just interesting. I'm always here for white tea. I just wish more, you know, black uh, commentators were talking about this. Because I've been following up with this like literally every day. This has been my, my, and this has been more entertaining to me than this whole Diddy Carisha saga. I mean, I'm here for that too, but I'm really here for this because this really affected people. So, um, and there's a lot of people who lost a lot of money um, to this. And what's so, yeah, look, LTT says quite fascinating. It really is. It really is. And what is so funny, we was to have these crypto discussions and people will literally come at you like you were stupid for just not jumping on board, you know, or not promoting, you know, cryptos. And it's just like, to me, all I see is a pyramid scheme. The people who got in early, they're good, but it just, you know, it just looks funny. I've noticed all the crypto bros who used to sit on Twitter and shame people 24 seven, they've been rather quiet. Where are the crypto bros at? They've been really quiet. And I think this case is about to set a precedence. They're gonna start peeling back all of the onions of all the crypto bros who are promoting all y'all scam ass cryptocurrencies all through 2020 and 2021. And they're going to start coming for a lot of them as well. Hence why they're quiet. And all you NFT scammers, they're going to be coming for y'all as well. And they're also going to use this case to start regulating crypto. Let's keep that real. This is what they needed. This is what the old heads have been waiting for. Crypto was supposed to be something that was completely unregulated and untraceable, quote unquote. So they were waiting for something like this. So now they can come in because y'all have already laid the blueprints. Y'all have already mined all types of Bitcoins and shit. So y'all have laid the tracks. Now the governments can come in and regulate it like they do fiat currency. <sighs> Problem, reaction, solution. So I'm here for it. I'm here for all this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here for these tears. I'm here for Gretchen Grundler getting Starbucks. <laughs> Meanwhile, she lost billions of dollars. Um, I'm here for all this, you know, uh, white on white crime, throwing each other under the bus, the white finance YouTubers trying to play crazy. I'm here for all this drama in the white sector of YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, the crypto bros, they've been real quiet lately. I've noticed they haven't been as braggadocious. A lot of them, there was a story the other day that a few of them went to go return their G-Wagons. I said, oh, this is interesting. 
So a lot of them are returning their expensive lease cars that they were, you know, uh, clowning y'all about not driving. And, you know, you're not you're not a real man if you don't have a Lambo. They're returning their Lambos now. So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting, child, how this ends up playing out. Um, but I think he's in big trouble. I think he's in big trouble. Um, yeah, they're, they're definitely going to use him as not only the scapegoat, they're going to use him to change regulations. Um, and they're, they're, they're probably going to use a lot of the money that he was giving away to these different entities um, to probably possibly hold them accountable. Well, you know, everyone besides the Democratic Party, they're not, they're not going to do that. But I think a lot of these other businesses, Super Bowl, you know, people who are promoting him and, and promoting his legitimacy, they may end up facing some trouble. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Gretchen Grundler, that's not her real name. Gretchen Grundler was one of my favorite characters on the show Recess. If you guys ever watched that, that was like, it came out in like the late 90s. Me and my little sister used to watch it. Gretchen Grundler, TJ Detweiler, Spinelli, uh, Vince, the little black boy. I love Vince. Mikey, he was like seven foot tall in third grade. I'm King Bob. Why do I remember all these characters? But Recess was my show, Okay. Uh, Ellison is her name. Caroline Ellison is his uh, freaky ex-girlfriend that he was having all these threesomes with. But if you look at Caroline Ellison, she looks like Gretchen Grundler. Let me see if I can pull it up. She looks just, she looks like a real version of Gretchen Grundler. Let me show y'all. Here she is. She's the one who helped him scheme as well. That is her, Caroline Ellison, AKA Gretchen Grundler. That's what she looks like to me. So yeah, if you go Googling Gretchen Grundler, you're gonna see the cartoon, but her name is really Caroline. I just nicknamed her Gretchen. Cause that's when I say, I just see Gretchen Grundler. I don't know, call me immature. That's just what I see every time I look at her. Um, but Gretchen Grundler, man, she was a beast. She was actually smart, unlike this idiot. Gretchen Grundler was actually a genius in the recess cartoons. That was my girl. Um, so I'm gonna read these last few super chats and I'm gonna get up out of here. But thank y'all so much for coming through. We had over 15,000 people tonight. So this was an awesome stream. <coughs> um, I'm coughing. The weather is changing once again, child. Let's see here. Somebody said Kelsey came to court and pulled a Nino Brown. Oh my gosh, not a Nino Brown. <laughs> uh, thank you, Nia Williams. Appreciate you, sis. Uh, Mari A. Sim 49 says, either way, it was Kelsey or it was all of them because Meg dropped Kelsey from the fight. They had seemed like it should have been the other way around. Thank you so much for the super chat. Bill's got me doing this. Sim 5 says, just want to thank you for keeping me entertained while working. I appreciate every effort you make to get us awesome content. Uh, love you, T. Love you, too. And thank you so much. I appreciate you as well. Regina Sanders says, T, you're on one tonight. You got me killing myself laughing. My number one is always. Thank you so much. Laughter is the best medicine. So I'm just happy I can make you guys laugh and smile and just have a good time. This is why I do this. I appreciate y'all. Um, let's see here. Potato Head says, we rebuke you, your glasses and your gums. You must be talking about Derek, Derek Jackson's uh, soon-to-be ex-wife. Yes, we rebuke her. We don't do curses over here, bitch. Whatever curse you're throwing onto the internet, it's going to bounce right back on you, okay? You don't do that. You don't wish people death behind Derek Jackson. Girl, bye. Um, Let's see here. Wavy Tay sent $99.99. Thank you so much, Wavy. I appreciate you. Uh, Wavy says, hey, Auntie, just wanted to say I'm proud of you and your platform. That stands for truth, ethics, and morals and life lesson. And T, you always preach to us that words have power and to be careful what you manifest because those same words can come back to bite you fast. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And yes, it is the truth. You know, you got to watch the things that you say and do because it can come right back to you. You know, so her putting out negative energy towards everybody else two weeks ago, that negativity came right back to her. And, you know, good old Derek Jackson hit her with a divorce paper. I bet you she didn't manifest that shit. <laughs> but she, you know what I mean? It, it has now appeared to her. Okay. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. 
Um, Miss Kitty says this woman is suffering from religious psychosis. Um, thank you for the super chat. Um, Corn Pop says this uh, Miss Bonnet is the very definition of buffet Bible. She's picking and choosing certain scriptures that fit her agenda. I totally agree. 100%. Thank you. Uh, Strawberry Bloom says, hey, uh, claims to be a Christian, but there are examples up and down in the Bible about adultery. Exactly. Thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, Glam Girl says, it's 14K people in here. Y'all hit the like button. Love you, T. Love you too, sis. Yes, please hit the like button. We got 16,000. No, we had 16. No, not 16. So I'm looking at the wrong thing. We got 6,000 likes. The math ain't mathin'. Please hit that like button. Thank y'all so much. Um, let's see. Uh, LTT sent 10 says his wife did everything he told her and manipulated it. It's quite sad. Looking good, T, as always. Thank you for your content. You are so welcome and thank you so much. Appreciate you. Um, KLIS sent 10 says Mini Madoff is right. He did the crypto community dirty. He was trying to take down Defi in cahoots with, with regulators. There's a lot of crap going on behind the scenes. Thanks, T, for all you do. You are so welcome. Oh, hold on now. Damn Danielle said 499. She says someone was saying in the chat that turkey legs is pregnant. <laughs> it's turkey legs, the side chick of Derek Jackson. They're saying she's knocked up. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, child support is the new hustle. Ask, you know, Dana Tran. Okay, she's going to be living good for the next 18 years. So I wouldn't be surprised at all. The bonnet of side chicks. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Mihai23 says, oh, my God, I'm all over this FBF story. Um, Ex-Black Lady Lawyer did an awesome breakdown of the bankruptcy filing. Check it out. Thank you. Um, Miss Sparkles22 says, Sam was arrested right before his Congress hearing. He's being protected, period. Yeah, it, it, it's like I said, they're trying to get to him and get some information out because he probably has a lot of info that's going to take down some pretty big people. So um, I'm definitely watching this very closely. I'm here for this. Uh, Marcus, the CEO, sent 999, says, hey, Auntie, glad I caught you live. Everybody hit the like button. If you're enjoying the content, it is free. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, let's see here. I think I read that. Savannah Dahl says, T, they arrested 10 influencers for a pump and dump fraud. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which influencers got arrested? Nick Smith says, I work in finance as an anti-money laundering analysis, and we've been talking about this. And by the way, I'm hyped to be in the Discord. Okay, that's what's up. I'm glad you're in the Discord. <clears throat> we'll probably do another meeting about this. We talked about it maybe two weeks ago. Um, yeah, yeah, we're always here for like the information, especially people who work in like, you know, analysis and, you know, anti-money laundering. It's really big. And a lot of people have been washing money with like the crypto. And if these influencers are going to jail, I feel no ways because they scammed a lot of their followers. And the thing that's even more disturbing, what people don't realize is that financial influencers tend to make the most money on social media, right? Because they're talking about finance, which is a very hot button topic. You know, who doesn't want to know how to make more money, how to invest their money? So people are always looking for ways to get rich. So they don't talk about anything deep. They're not talking about conspiracies. They're not truthers. And they don't really have to use other people's content. They're literally regurgitating what they've read or what they've learned. So they're some of the safest YouTubers. So they get millions of hits, hundreds and thousands of views. I remember... Um, what is his name? The little short, tiny one. Graham Stephens was talking about how he makes $2 million a year and how in one video, sometimes he can make $10,000 in one video. He was doing a whole breakdown on Instagram. I downloaded the video. Um, maybe I'll post it later. 
But he was bragging about how he can make, make ten thousand dollars in one video. Black content creators would be lucky to even see a fraction of that in a month, let alone in one video. Right? Not hating. I'm just keeping it real. So what bothers me is if you're making ten thousand dollars minimum. No, excuse me. That was his maximum. He says usually between four and ten. So let's just take the minimum four thousand for just one video. And these videos aren't heavily edited. They're not doing screen grabs and pictures. And they're not they're literally just sitting there talking. So they don't even have to put a lot of money, in, I mean, a lot of work into their edits, right? Um, so if you're making $2 million a year, and that's not including sponsorships, <clears throat> that's not including merchandise. He was selling coffee at one point, too. He's making money off of that. I don't understand why you have to take crypto sponsorships or sponsorships pushing things that you know damn well you yourself don't believe in you know how many people have come to me about oh i got this crypto and i would love for you to help promote this crypto and i can pay you x amount of dollars and i shut it down and i don't make a fraction of what they make i'm not interested i don't push crypto onto my fans because i know how hard my fans work and i would feel bad as fuck if I had them signing up for some crypto and they lose their money, then it's on me. So I'm not understanding how people who make that much money can't do the same. I'm not saying don't take sponsorships. I'm not saying, hell, I do sponsorships here now, right? Because they demonetize so much of my stuff. I've been forced to, hey, y'all, let me pause this live. Here goes a sponsored ad. But I'm very picky with the stuff I do. Do y'all know established titles? They sent me something. It's up there. It's that black thing. That, that's one of their little... I don't want to get up. I'm wearing pants, though. Let me not act. I'm just sitting here in panties or nothing. I mean, I'm wearing pants. I don't want y'all to see me, Shadow. I don't want y'all to, to get up. But it's up there. Um, They sent me... They wanted me to promote established titles. So they sent me the information. I said, okay, you know, cool. I got to look more into your company. So as I looked more into the company, I said, well, this doesn't even make any sense. They were willing to pay me several thousand dollars. I turned it down. I said, none of this stuff makes sense. How do we know that you planted a tree? How can I come to, to Ireland or where the hell, Scotland, and come actually see my plot? And they couldn't answer any of this. So there goes the title right there, that black thing. That's where it sits. Y'all have never saw me come on here and be like, oh, I haven't... So it's like once you do the research and you see that these companies aren't really fit to be tied to your brand, you turn it down. I could have still went and promoted them and got, you know, several thousand dollars. But I was like, no, I'm cool. And now it's so funny because now information is coming out that they have been scamming people. But guess who is one of the main ones pushing uh, established titles? The finance gurus who make two million dollars a year. So at this point, it's just greed. It's just it's weird. It's just greed. So, yeah, they sent me a time. Yeah, I, no, I have on pants. Y'all not going to do me. See, I, I'm wearing pants. I just, you know what I'm saying? I'm on my little weight loss journey. They're going to say, T up there sitting down in panties. No, I just don't want to get up. Shit, y'all know I'm on my little weight loss journey, child. Y'all going to be like, oh, that ass. No, no, ma'am. Y'all ain't about to clown me all up. <laughs> I worked out today <laughs> for my 20 minutes. Y'all tried it. Talking about she's sitting up there in panties. No, I got on pants. Y'all tried it. Y'all not going to do me like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, like I said, so you have people who come at you with all types of stuff, but you got to be able to, you know, decipher what, you know, what you can stand by and what you can't. That's why for me, I prefer things like HelloFresh, you know, because they actually send us food and shit. We eat good for like a good two weeks. You know, they send them meals. I make my son cook. You know, that's something I can stand behind. You order food, you're going to get food. The established title shit just, it didn't make sense to me. So I kept their damn title and told them, no, thank you. But if they want it back, they can get it back, but they got to pay for me to ship it back to them. So, oh, well. <laughs> so that's why I really, I really appreciate y'all. The fact that y'all come to my live streams, y'all support me. I may never be as big as a Graham Stephan or, you know, I love Coffeezilla. I really like him or, you know, Philip DeFranco or you know, some of the other big name people who do commentary, but it's okay. You know, I'd rather have my hardcore supporters who support me and who support integrity. So yeah, I did see that, uh, that Twitch died. 
Uh, I have posted it on, on Instagram. We posted it as soon as it happened. It's sad. It's something about Ellen De DeGeneres, though. It's something about her energy. People are like, oh, you're trying to say that. I didn't say Ellen killed him. Y'all love to put words in my mouth on Instagram. I didn't say that. I just said Ellen is just, she's bad energy. It's just something about too many people that have done died around her. I don't know. Starting with the, you know, the first girlfriend and then Anne Heche. Uh, she got into a car crash. She popped up out the body bag. They put her back in the body bag. Then they said she died. It's just too many strange coincidences around Ellen. That's all I'm saying. I didn't say that he that she killed him. Um, but yeah, you know, mental health is real. People really be going through stuff, especially around the holidays. So like I always tell y'all, check on your strong friends. Because some of the ones that y'all think are the strongest or living their best life, you know, people really be going through it, especially in this day and age. So just check on folks. Make sure they're okay. Somebody gonna say, do a deep dive on Ellen. No, I'm straight. <laughs> I, I don't wanna do a deep dive on Ellen Epstein. Um, on that note, y'all, I'm out. Y'all have a good night. Thank you guys for joining me this evening. I had a wonderful time. Uh, we talked about a lot of stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I will talk to you guys later. Bye, y'all.